हाई फ्रेंड्स आई एम सी अनु जलोटा योर एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ सेप्टेंबर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर आर कंप्लीटली ओवर एज फार एज दिस सब्जेक्ट गोज दैट इज कॉस्ट एंड मैनेजमेंट अकाउंटिंग पेपर ऑफ दैट वॉज हेल्ड ऑन नाइनटींथ ऑफ सेप्टेंबर आई गॉट द पेपर वन डे लेट बट द पेपर दैट आई गॉट हैड टू मच अमाउंट ऑफ मार्किंग सो आई थॉट आई गेट इट टाइप कंप्लीटली दिस इज वन थिंग दैट आई डू ईच एंड एवरी अटेम्प्ट and that is whenever the paper is held i bring you the complete solution okay in beginning i just try to be saying the final answers for the benefit for the benefit of those students who just now gave the examination and just want to be checking how many marks they will be getting but this video will be mainly more suitable for those students who have to be giving their examinations in future it will help to bring to build some confidence that yes whatever you all have done in examination basically those things only come now if you want to be really making use of these videos then please ensure that you keep a print out of the ics paper or you all can take out this print out also okay and try to solve it with me completely in case there are any doubts you can always put up those doubts in the comment section below okay let's start it off now as far as the paper first thing that goes sir how tough was the paper if i have to try to rate the paper from 1 to 10 10 being the toughest i will say that this particular paper was 7 on 10 there were around 3 questions in middle that were not i'll say super tough but those required good amount of brains that is one thing second uh you know that out of 100 marks 30 marks is mcqs okay 15 questions of 2 marks each you are also aware that there is part 2 part 2 is nothing but practical paper pra uh, practical paper is going to be of 70 marks now this you have to be doing the markings in the sheet itself that goes back to the examiner and over here you have to write the answers on a particular paper now this time also the same things were there in case some people do not know the paper pattern so 15 questions of 2 marks each and over here you'll have question number 1 to 6 okay so therefore there are six questions of 14 marks each you have to be doing out of that any five of them but the first one being compulsory okay so therefore 70 marks from here apart from that uh, 30 marks from part 1 together that will be making that thing as 100 marks okay now as far as the coverage goes it was every chapter that was asked but from three chapters uh they did not ask the questions they only asked the theory that was job and batch costing and apart from that that was joint products and by products in fact one day before the examinations i had uh, written on a telegram channel that which chapters are important there i had written uh, process costing i had written activity based costing then overheads then uh, standard costing and marginal costing and coincidentally whatever okay around 60 to 70% of the paper was from there only so in the mcqs part this is the index of the part 1 they asked process costing approximately there were six questions on that they all asked material costing there were six questions on that two questions on labor costing and one on marginal costing that is your cvp analysis okay uh in that this question was relatively tougher as compared to all other questions and when it came to the descriptive questions okay they almost covered all the chapters you all had uh in this case chapter like say uh, labor costing that was chapter number 3 then you all had uh, overheads chapter number 4 then you all had chapter number 5 that is activity based costing chapter number 6 that is nothing but cost sheet chapter number 7 that is nothing but reconciliation or cost accounting system chapter number 8 and 9 they asked in the theory okay not in the practical part then chapter number 10 was your process costing process costing was asked over here only so therefore they did not ask that thing again same way for material costing that was asked over here only for good number of marks so therefore they did not again ask a question uh joint products and by products they again asked a theory question over here apart from that costing of service sector they asked over here then chapter number 13 was standard costing those guys asked over here chapter number 14 was your marginal costing they asked over here 
and lastly in fact they asked two questions on marginal costing over here one was here and one was over here then there was budgetary control that was also asked as such so therefore nothing was left okay so if some students think sir this time these chapters have come next time other chapters will come that is whatever is my assessment boss it doesn't work like this okay in case you want to be sure that you will be passing then simple way do all the things that will make your job easier okay now just before i try to reveal the final answers few things i am telling for your information uh from 2002 i have started to teach this is approximately my 22nd year of teaching i have taught more than 50000 students and uh, many students have got uh, air1 air2 ar3 ar4 then ar5 it ranges now one thing of the record no student gets a rank because of a teacher okay we teach to everybody beta okay but then those people put in more efforts as compared to other students so therefore in case you are ambitious to get a rank okay i know that the teacher does matter but i also know that your hard works do matter much more as compared to your teacher okay so therefore please ensure you do your hard work okay that is one thing second thing there are many students who have a financial constraint so therefore few things i had started to do on every saturday sunday my lectures of my previous batch come on our youtube channel many chapters have already been covered but every saturday sunday at 9 pm videos come okay so in case you have friends who are not financially sound okay tell them to take advantage of these lectures my aim of course is not to be earning money in this i'm doing everything free with these lectures you get a complete colored book soft copy that you all can download and print again completely free you get a homework section you get solution of the homework section you get ranking of every question you get a summary of every question you get test at the end of each and every chapter i am doing my bit to be spreading good conceptual knowledge for all the students because new examination pattern is only conceptual there is no amount of mugging that will be helping you all you know i say about rank because i was a rank holder this is again not a show off statement but most of the people who get ranks they trust themselves more rather than you know the youtube or the channels or the teachers up in so on so you do your hard work things should be okay now <clears throat> this is one thing so all our lectures of costing are coming free on youtube first all the lectures are coming in english hindi then all the lectures in english language will come this is first second if somebody wants the latest batch okay latest batch that we all are doing in costing then there is a link in the description you all can click on that and you all can enroll for the batch at the cheapest possible price okay third my live batches will be starting soon you all can call us on 8080324444 for the live batches of costing and of fm these are the two subjects that i take okay and believe me most of the teachers even who are teaching now okay most of those teachers either have been our students or use our material for making their notes but then dressed up in a way so therefore you don't try to be feeling that i say that because most of those people ask me doubt even till today because many things like you know those guys only try to read from the module up and so on so be wise i am trying to do good amount of justice to all the students by giving all the lectures okay conceptually perfect okay so even if you do this that is enough for you all to be getting 90 plus in costing and 40 to 45 plus in financial management okay these lectures should be enough in case you all want the complete solution that i have prepared please message us on our telegram id our telegram id is at the rate agnx message over there with your name phone number and your attempt whether it was this attempt or it'll be the future attempts and we will give the complete solution that we all have prepared to you further <coughs> uh on our youtube channel all the module mcqs of costing are already there and for fm we are releasing more mcqs every tuesday and thursday at 9 pm on our youtube channel 
that also i would like that you subscribe to the channel and you try to watch those videos it'll hardly take two or three minutes for each and every video but then it will bring all the memories back of that chapter in case you all have some final ca students there's a subject called as scpm all the questions of board of studies portal as well as the module are being put over there every monday wednesday friday so just to conclude monday wednesday friday is reserved for ca final tuesday thursday is for ca inter fm and saturday sunday complete costing lectures come okay and as i told in case you wish to be enrolling for a complete course you all can always speak to us on 8080324444 okay or you all can check up the details in the description okay now for those students who have given the paper right now and who are just watching this video sir tell us the final solutions that is more than enough so here i am telling you the final solution of each and every question okay so therefore over here mcqs question number 1 this is the answer question number 2 this is the answer question number 3 question number 4 question number 5 marked in yellow okay those people who have done who have given the examination now those guys will understand okay apart from that for question number 6 to 10 okay this will be your answer 29 days 2 lakh 4000 5100 Two nine two five and two two five zero. Apart from that, question number eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen was standalone question. Twenty five percent was your answer over here. Twelve rupees was your answer over here. Twenty percent answer over here. Twenty two five hundred answer over here and twenty uh, eight rupees answer over here. Okay, so these were the fifteen answers that I had to be saying for the MCQ part. As far as the practical question goes, first question was on costing of service sector. You have to find out the total cost per batch. You have to find out cost per batch, and you had to be finding out fees per student. These are the three answers. Okay, further. Next question was on reconciliation. You have to find out costing profit as a balancing figure. Answer was one lakh twenty five thousand. Then question number one C was on CVP analysis. Over there, the profit was uh, sorry thirty two thousand was the extra profit. Part two was the discussion part, whereby we should be saying that let's not have differential pricing in India. All people should be getting the same pricing. And part three, profit will be falling down from one lakh eighty to one lakh forty eight. In case you will accept the offer, so therefore it should not be done. Okay. Further, question number two A over here. It was a cost sheet question. Okay, and these were supposed to be the two profits as such. Okay, one one seven six hundred two zero five eight hundred. This was supposed to be your answer. Okay. Further. Question number two, part B. This was on labor costing. Okay, how you all can try to be treating the labor cost? This was on that particular thing. Okay, so over here there were four options. How overtime is to be treated? Here we try to find out the inflation rate. Here the overtime premium as such, ah, uh, will be getting charged to factory overheads. Over here, entire amount will be getting to the customer, and over here, the overtime will be getting charged to costing profit and loss account. Okay. Further, question number three A. This was on activity based costing. Okay, this was a tough question. Although the same question we all have done in our class also. In fact, I had given you all a test where exactly same question was there, just the numbers were different. Okay, so if you all remember that question, okay, this should have been a cake walk for you all. Okay. uh over here under absorption costing these were your two answers okay and uh, under activity based costing these will be your two answers okay further uh this question was on flexible budgets and this will be your three costs okay further uh you all had a question on standard costing in standard costing in this case 10500 adverse 7500 favorable price variance 18000 adverse was your usage variance mix variance was 5000 adverse uh material yield variance was 13000 adverse apart from that in this case your labor variance is 38000 adverse rate variance 30000 adverse uh for the idle time variance was 10000 adverse and efficiency variance was 2000 favorable okay this was on your standard costing then there was one question on tolls okay 
build, operate, transfer. You have to try to classify the cost. Land acquisition will be part of your capital cost. This will be part of operating expenses. Materials and labor is part of your capital cost. Contingency allowances are part of your capital cost. Toll collection expenses is operating expense and periodic maintenance will be nothing but periodic painting will be nothing but your maintenance cost. Okay. Then there was one question on overheads. You have to be finding out CMHR, Comprehensive Machina Rate. Over there, these should be your three rates as such. Okay. Further, 1218, 1372.8 and 1032.49. Approximately, these should have been your answers. Okay. Then, question number five, part B. Uh, this was on limiting factors. Okay. Over here, this was the current profit that was there. Okay. Uh, then in case you will be accepting that offer, okay, profit in this case will be changing or something, okay, that new profit increases by 7,50,000 and uh, 7,50 plus, 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 3,30 becomes your new total profit, those people who have worked it out, okay, further. Question number six, this was a theory question, in that this was there from chapter number one. Okay, controllable and uncontrollable variance was there from standard costing. This was there from budgetary control. This was there from uh, byproducts. And this was from job and batch costing. These were all easy as such. Okay, so these are the final answers. Those people who wish to check their final answers. Okay, uh, now officially I will start away by solving each and every question. Please do remember in case you are in too much amount of hurry, don't have time to be watching, don't watch. But in case you are watching the video, please take the question paper with you and solve the complete paper with me. Okay, this will instill good amount of confidence that examination papers are also like normal papers only. Okay, let's start it off by doing the MCQs first. So let's start it off with part one, 30 marks. Now you all know that part one is compulsory. You will be getting a sheet in which you have to tick the correct answer. That sheet goes back to the examiner only. I got the question paper from somewhere. I've got it typed. So let me start. There were 15 questions of two marks each. First five questions were there from process costing. One more was there from process costing. Six to 10 were there from material costing. Another one was there from material costing. Further, there were two questions from labor costing and one from CVP analysis. Let's start it off. Okay, so our first question. Now, first five questions were based upon this. They were based upon process costing. Now, over here, you will have to be making your process account else you will not be able to solve this. Okay, let's do this. Sagar Limited uh, and oil Refinery uses process costing for determining the cost of each process. Management of Saga Limited is confused about the method of valuation of WIP. They have FIFO and weighted average cost method under consideration. Now, to be very honest, we all have solved three types of methods in uh, process costing. We all have uh, FIFO, LIFO and weighted average. But I told in advance also that LIFO method I say is never ever asked. Okay. In past also, they will not ask in future also. We just did one question for time pass. Further. Finance manager Mr. Sahil has put forward that weighted average method is only suitable when there are significant fluctuations in price and quantity. You might have done this thing in, in 11, 12th also that weighted average method is used wherever the fluctuations are a lot. In this method, calculation has to be done at every purchase and is a con complex and time consuming method. Okay, further. He also stated that price and the quantity of input output material of Saga Limited is almost the same for the whole year. Hence, FIFO method will be more suitable for the company. So he's saying like, you know, let's try to solve or let's try to use the FIFO method. He also revealed that in an oil refinery, FIFO method is preferred over weighted average cost method and switching to FIFO method will save cost, will save time and money. He further stated that using FIFO method, WIP is valued at current cost. Now, this is a property of FIFO method because whatever comes in first, will be going out first. So whatever is left in it, that's nothing but your closing stock. It'll get valued at current cost only. Provided the following information. Okay. What information? So first of all, you all have opening WIP, 12,000 units at total cost of 166,200. Degree of completion, obviously of opening stock, material 100%, labor and overheads 80%. Okay. Material introduced 74,500, direct labor, okay. And overheads, okay. Now, one thing, this information is for the opening stock. 
दिस इज ऑब्वियसली करंट पीरियड कॉस्ट ओके बोथ ऑफ देम विल बी कमिंग ऑन डेबिट साइड डायरेक्टली ओके फॉर यूनिट स्क्रैप नाउ यूनिट स्क्रैप इफ यूल रिमेंबर देन यूनिट स्क्रैप कैन ईदर मीन नॉर्मल लॉस प्लस एब नॉर्मल लॉस और इट कैन ऑल्सो मीन नॉर्मल लॉस लेस एब नॉर्मल गेन ओके फॉर डिग्री ऑफ कंप्लीशन मटीरियल हंड्रेड परसेंट लेबर एंड ओवर हेड सेवेंटी परसेंट ओके दैट्स इट ओके फर्दर देर शुड बी सम मोर इंफॉर्मेशन याद दे रहे सो क्लोजिंग डब्ल्यू आई पी इज टू थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड यूनिट्स ओके डिग्री ऑफ कंप्लीशन मटीरियल इज हंड्रेड परसेंट लेबर एंड ओवर हेड इज सिक्सटी परसेंट रेस्ट ऑफ द यूनिट्स वर ट्रांसफर टू द नेक्स्ट प्रोसेस जस्ट वन थिंग फॉर यू ऑल टू बी नोटिंग एवरीवेयर लेबर एंड ओवर हेड इज हैविंग सेम स्टेज ऑफ कंप्लीशन एवरीवेयर ओके इफ एवरीवेयर इट हैज देन यू कैन प्रिपेयर अ कॉमन कॉलम इन स्टेट ऑफ इक्वाल एंड आउटपुट दे rest of the units rest of the units just a sec mm. yeah so rest of the units were transferred to the next process okay normal loss is 2% of total input including opening wip realizable value of normal loss is deducted from cost of material introduced i'm speaking this line once more normal loss is 2% of total input units including opening wip okay realizable value of normal loss is 2 per unit and is deducted from material introduced fine you are requested to calculate the following using fifo method mcq number 125 value of the units transferred to the next process so this is whatever goes from p1 to p2 value of closing wip this will be appearing in your process account equivalent units of material and material cost per unit this will be coming as part of your statement of equivalent output equivalent units of labor and overhead and total cost per this will be coming as part of statement of equivalent output for the value of abnormal loss to be shown in the process account okay value of abnormal loss to be shown in the process account this is whatever is the abnormal loss okay now i'm starting with a few things i have already done in fact most of the things because just that i wanted that the video will be slightly smaller okay i'm going to be highlighting all the things that i have done using a green color highlighter okay please note that okay so first of all i'm making a process account on process account what comes on the debit side is opening wip then materials come labor come and overheads come okay on the credit side first thing that comes is normal loss then comes process 2 okay whatever will be going to the next process and then comes your closing stock okay further abnormal loss might also be coming abnormal gain can also be coming that we all will see although you all have realized that it will be abnormal loss but let me tell you all the logics okay so opening wip check up over here 12000 units at 166 200 12000 166 200 then further uh material labor and overheads 180 now this stage of completion we don't require at this stage it will be coming in state of equivalent output then material introduced 74500 74500 will be coming over here okay this will material introduced then there are three current period cost over here so therefore these are nothing but three current period cost so these are the three current period costs 1 2 and 3 over here okay further uh see normal loss is see this line over here please normal loss is 2% of total input including opening wip okay so therefore this figure plus this figure you take it on your calci into 2% beta once you all do that i guess that figure should be coming to 1730 and normal loss in this case will be scrapped at the rate of 2 per unit okay 2 per unit was given to you over here correct for the uh so 3460 comes because of that now see once you have figured out normal loss now actually you start to be realizing there must be abnormal loss in this question how normal loss is 1730 and total units scrapped were 1900 so normal loss is 1730 you have scrapped much more no if you have scrapped much more then in that case uh, if you have scrapped much more that is you have scrapped 1900 beta so therefore 170 in this case must be nothing but abnormal loss so therefore that's how abnormal loss comes over here of 170 units okay and closing stock quantity was over here closing stock quantity was 2600 okay further 
See, now we got to be making statement of equivalent output. But just before we all do that, okay, uh, we all got to be doing all the bifurcations. How do we do all the bifurcations as such? Now you have, you might have been taught in a different way, but this is what whatever I do, whatever suits you all. Okay, see. First of all, all losses are always out of current input, whether it is this or it is this. So therefore, 74,500, this is first part and this is the second part. Okay, so both of them in this case uh, are part of your current quantity. All current losses are deemed to be out of current input. Okay, now you can try to be following the FIFO method. FIFO means whatever has come in first, whatever has come in first will be getting completed first. So therefore, 12,000 must be part of 82,000. So therefore, one figure is 12,000. Other figure in this case is nothing but 70,000. Okay, that's it. Now, uh, 12,000 and 70,000. Okay. So, this is the bifurcation of this and this. Now, see, 12,000 is from here. So, 70,000 must be out of the goods that was started in this period. So, therefore, one part of 74,500 more will be nothing but 70,000. And the last part will be 2600, 2600. That's it. Now, once this part is all together explained by me. So therefore 74500 has four parts. Although most of the people have been taught, sir, we don't require that breakup. Okay, you might not do that. What you all require is basically this breakup and you all require this and this. Okay, because in statement of equivalent output, that particular thing comes. But I usually try to be explaining the logic, how all the things tally up. Okay, so now, so what all happened in this period? I guess four things happened in this period. First, 12,000 units, which were partly completed in the earlier period, got fully completed. So opening stock process further and completed. 70,000 units were fully started also in this period, completed also in this period. 170 units was nothing but abnormal loss. Okay. And lastly, in this case, units that were started but not completed were 2,600. Now, with this, we start to be making uh, our statement of equivalent output percentages. Okay, see, few things. I guess this is always 100% only because these goods were started also in this period and completed also in this period. Further, opening stock. Opening stock in this case was 100, sorry. Opening stock was already 180%. So in this period, what must have come is zero and 20%. Okay, because this was processed further and completed material was already there. So labor and overheads must have been added to the extent of 20%. So that's what this thing comes over here. So therefore 0% for materials 20% over here. Then abnormal loss is part of the unit scrapped. Okay, so therefore unit scrap percentage was 170, 100% and 70%. This must have been started in this period. So 170 must have come in this period only beta. 170 must have come in this period. So please multiply. Okay, further. Further in this case, the last one started and not finished. Started and not finished in this case, uh, started and not finished means closing stock 160. These were also started in this period only in IR. This is nothing but your closing stock, right? Okay, so therefore 160. So therefore obviously 160 must have been added in this period. That's it. You do that. This is your equivalent output for materials. This is your equivalent output in this case for your labor and FOH. Once this part is done, we start to be finding out our cost per unit of output. For materials, this is one cost. For labor and overheads, this is the other cost. Okay. So I've written that cost over here for materials, for labor and overheads. But from materials, we try to subtract scrap value of normal loss. That is 3460. I must have subtracted that thing over here. This divided by this figure. And these two costs divided by this particular figure. Once you will do that, then in that case, I guess job is altogether over. 6.5 is a cost, 9 is a cost. Total is going to be 15.5 over here. Okay, now, once this thing is done, we try to be finding out first, second and third figure. Okay, if you all want, if you don't want much amount of time to be spent for this, find out any two, take third one as a balancing figure. I have done calculation for all of them separately. Okay, see. Uh, let me start away with the last one. It'll become easier. Closing stock means started and not finished. Okay. 2600 into 6.5. 1560 into 9. Okay. I'll rub the mess out. So just a sec. Hmm. So 2600 
into 6.5, 1560 into 9. That calculation I must have done over here. Once you all do that, 30940. So therefore, this will be nothing but your closing stock over here. So therefore, 30940. Further, for abnormal loss, it will be nothing but 170 into 6.5, 119 into 9. Okay, so that calculation I have done over here. Okay, 2176. So therefore, value of abnormal loss is 2176. Okay, then if you want, you can calculate this as a balancing figure also. Although I have computed that thing in a good way, so. Goods completed 160. Uh, see, goods completed in this case is 82,000, but it is comprising of two different types of goods. No, 12,000 and 70. You add up the cost of 12, add up the cost of uh, 70. You'll get the cost of 82. For 12 also, some cost is already incurred. That is nothing but this figure 166,200. That is what I've written over here. Plus whatever cost you have incurred in this period, whatever happened in this period, materials nothing, labor and over it's 2,400 into 9. 2,400 into 9. 21,600. That's it. This will be 187,800. Further, started and finished ten eighty five thousand. How did that thing come? See, all the seventy thousand units were started also in this period, finished also in this period. No, so therefore entire fifteen point five was incurred in this period only. So seventy thousand to fifteen point five will be this figure. So total is twelve lakh seventy two thousand eight hundred. That's it. With that, your complete job is all together over. Twelve seventy two eight hundred. So I'm going to be writing twelve seventy two eight hundred over here. This is the cost of the goods that were transferred to the next process. Twelve seventy two eight hundred. Okay, that's it. With that, my jobs are completely done, and my jobs in this case, see. Value of abnormal loss two one seven six. That's your answer. I'll just try to highlight them by yellow. Then uh, equivalent units of labor and overheads. Labor and overheads seventy four zero seven nine at nine rupees. Seventy four zero seven nine at nine rupees. Okay. Further. Then part C was equivalent units of material and material cost per unit. Okay. So material was seventy two seven seventy at six point five. Seventy-two seven seventy at six point five. This should be your answer. Further, value of closing WIP. This is your closing WIP. Three zero nine four zero. Three zero nine four zero. Okay. And further, in this case, will be ah. Uh, further, in this case, will be last one. I guess what is asked. Value of the units transfer to the next process. I just calculated that thing. No, twelve seventy two eight hundred. Is there an option? Yeah, twelve seventy two eight hundred. Okay, that's it. These are your question number one to five. Okay, let's start it off with the next part. Chale guys, so this is case scenario number two. Now this leads to question number six to question number ten. Now let's start it off. This. Uh, F W manufactures various types of footwear and covers a considerable market share. Okay, the footwear made by the company are stylish and durable. The management calls for an urgent meeting because it has come to their notice that two of their old permanent customers have moved over to their competitors. Okay. Marketing manager has stated that there are circumstances when the company cannot fulfill the demand of their customers due to shortage of supply, and this is the main reason to move on. So this company manufactures a footwear. It has good market share, but these days they are realizing that some of their old customers. Okay, do remember that we are the manufacturers. We must be supplying to the wholesalers. We also call them as distributors. Okay, now two of those wholesale customers have gone over to the competitors because we were having shortage of goods. Okay. Now they are saying, like you know, that we cannot fulfill their demand because of shortage of supply. So therefore, we were not being able to supply them the shoes up and so on. And this is the main reason. Further, production manager has stated that the production team is working efficiently, but the workers have to wait long enough for the raw material, which leads to idle time and low production. Okay. Further, the cost accounts team of FW Limited has furnished the following data for W Company and Component B. 
परचेज प्राइस फोर्टी एट हंड्रेड पर यूनिट वन सेक दिस यू रीड फर्स्ट एंड विद दैट यू रीड दिस ऑल्सो फोर्टी एट हंड्रेड यूनिट इज अ परचेज प्राइस सॉरी रुपीज फोर्टी एट हंड्रेड इज अ परचेज प्राइस हाउ मेनी यूनिट्स वी परचेज सिक्सटी थाउजेंड आई एम यूजिंग माई कैल्स एट दिस टाइम ओनली सिक्सटी थाउजेंड इंटू फोर्टी एट हंड्रेड सो दे फोर इट इज जस्ट से का फोर्टी एट हंड्रेड इंटू सिक्सटी थाउजेंड divided by 1 lakh i'll try to have the figures in lakh so therefore it is 2880 lakhs this is nothing but purchase cost less trade discount okay trade discount is 2% so let me deduct less 2% it comes to 2822.4 lakhs okay after deducting the trade discount trade discount has to be uh, reduced okay further टोटल ड्यूटीज नो क्रेडिट इज अवेलेबल एट परसेंट ऑफ परचेज प्राइस बेटा परचेज प्राइस वॉज दिस इन ओके सो एट परसेंट ऑफ दिस फिगर ओके सो दे फोर टू एट एट जीरो लैक्स इन टू एट परसेंट सो दिस इज टू हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी पॉइंट फोर लैक्स वन थिंग योर टोटल कॉस्ट विल बी योर नेट परचेज कॉस्ट प्लस any other expenses that you are going to be incurring okay so therefore this is another expense so therefore please add it na yaar so therefore 230.4 plus 2822.4 so therefore this will be 3052 uh, 0.8 lakhs okay i have added this particular thing total duty is no credit avail i hope so you all will understand you will not get any itc on this okay further Insurance charges are sixty-two thousand per year. Sixty-two thousand will be point six two. This is also your cost only. So therefore, whenever you purchase, you might be getting the goods from a foreign country. So therefore, you it will be must for you to take out the insurance. So therefore, add point six two. So therefore, this is three zero five three point four two. Three zero five three point four two. Okay. So therefore, this will be your total cost as such. Okay. Further. opening stock i'll just enclose this with a highlighter this is the opening stock of materials this is a closing stock of materials okay further usage per week minimum maximum average delivery period minimum maximum average lead time for emergency purchases will be 2 weeks fine further additional information now due to this no it, i might have a discrepancy with the institute i might have i'm not very sure what answer they are going to be having i'm going to be expressing my uh, views as such okay additional information normal wastage during uh, the storage is 80 units no realizable value and abnormal loss is 40 units so therefore in all 120 units will be lost either in form of the normal loss or abnormal loss okay further Factory works for three sixty five days in a year. You are required to calculate the things for MCQ six to ten. Okay, so let's start to be doing that. Calculate average number of days for which average inventory level is to be held. Okay, this called as inventory turnover period. If you all remember, so. uh if you'll remember first of all we call this as inventory turnover ratio for raw materials is nothing but raw materials consumed divided by in this case average raw material stock okay average raw material stock so therefore this was your formula for inventory turnover ratio and once you compute this you do 365 divided by inventory turnover ratio you are right at your answer we will see the answer in just a while calculate the amount of abnormal loss during the shortage to be transferred to costing profit and loss account based on average price okay average price means weighted average price so therefore they are asking you calculate the amount of abnormal loss abnormal loss is always valued at cost we got to be finding out that further calculate the cost per unit of material by using average price method okay so here compute cost per unit cost of materials by average price method so calculate cost per unit that means okay further calculate the minimum stock level okay minimum stock level if you all remember the formula it's nothing but rol minus uh, average consumption into average lead time so for this you'll have to be computing rol first rol is nothing but maximum consumption into maximum lead time okay so therefore that will start to be giving you all that answer further what will be the danger level of stock okay danger level is nothing but average consumption 
into emergency lead time. Okay. Can I do the easier part first and then the discussion part? I think that'll be far better for me. Now see, average consumption is given to you. So average consumption per week is 1125. So 1125 into emergency lead time was given to you over here, I guess. Lead time for emergency purchases is two weeks. So therefore into two. So 1125 into two. 1125 into two. So therefore 2250. So therefore this should be your one answer. Okay, then further. I'll go in the reverse order. Yeah, I, I don't know for whatever reason. Further, calculate the maximum stock level. Sorry, calculate the minimum stock level. For that, you find out your ROL first. So for ROL, it is maximum consumption into maximum lead time. But our maximum consumption is uh, 1200. Maximum lead time is nine weeks. So therefore, 1200 into nine is equal to 10,800. 10,800. Oh, I am really sorry. So 10,800 is your reorder level. Okay, so let's start to be computing. 10,800 minus average consumption into average lead time. Average consumption into average lead time. 1,125 and 7. 1,125 into 7. So 1,125 into 7 minus 10,800. 2,925 should be the answer. Okay, this should be the answer. Just a sec, yellow color. So this should be your answer as such. Okay, fine. Further, further in this case, calculate the cost per unit of materials by using average price method. Now see, this is important for me. Now see, calculate the cost of the materials. Now when we all did our material costing, right in the beginning, we all did this part. And that was, whenever you try to be computing cost of materials, first of all, include all your costs. I guess this figure will include all my costs. First of all, net basic cost plus the duties plus the insurance. 3053.42. Okay, now this figure I must have calculated also in our note over here. Okay, see. Uh, purchase cost. Okay, less the trade discount. I got this figure plus the duties. That was 8% of this figure. I got this answer. Add the insurance. So therefore, this is the same figure that I calculated right now. See, this is the total cost. But this total cost, mark this, huh? mark this, because most of people must have done error over here only. This cost is not incurred for 60,000 units that you have purchased. No, you all have, might have purchased 60,000 units. That is for sure. But when you purchase 60,000, you knew that there will be a normal loss of 80 units. That word is given to you. So therefore, you never ever incurred this particular cost for 60,000 units. You incurred this cost for 59,920 units. Okay. So therefore, this is your current period cost. This is your, in this case, uh, this thing you all can ignore. Uh, so therefore, this and this. Now, if they would have asked, what is current period cost? So this is the current period cost divided by the number of units expected to consume. This figure is 60,000 minus 80 units. Right in our first lecture of material costing, we all did this thing that uh, your cost per unit is nothing but total cost divided by the number of units expected to be consumed. Okay, that's it. So 5096. Okay, but this is not what you want because those guys have asked you over here that calculate the per unit cost of material by using average price method. By using average price method. Okay, so average price method. See, this is your current cost. This is your current number of units. Fine. Fine. Now, you also had opening stock beta over here. You try to be seeing that. You also had opening stock. 5,000 units multiplied by 5150. Take your calci. So, therefore, how do you compute your average price? So, therefore, we multiplied both those things. This was your opening stock. So, this is current data. This is the data of opening stock. And that is the cost for 5,000 units. How do you compute the weighted average price? Add current period cost plus last period cost. So, therefore, this will be your answer. Add current period units and last year, current uh, period units and the last year units. So therefore, in this case, that will be 64,920. 
So this figure divided by this will be giving you all weighted average. Okay, so therefore 5100 was your weighted average cost or based upon the average price. Okay, so this should be the answer. So therefore answer will be 5100. That should be the correct answer. Now, one thing for those people who do not know this funda, whenever you purchase the raw materials, whenever you purchase the raw materials, raw material is also called as your stores. Okay. You try to be making an account like this. Most of you all will be knowing this date, receipts, issues and balance. Correct. In that you will have quantity rate amount. What do you mean by amount? What do you mean by quantity? Amount means total cost that you all will incur for materials. There are many things that come. I've explained few of those things. The other things are not relevant to this question. Quantity means quantity available for consumption. Quantity available for consumption is nothing but uh, units purchase minus all the losses that you are expecting before the consumption taking place. So ultimately, this is the cost for these menus because I must have purchased 60, but then I knew in advance that 80 units will get wasted. No. So therefore, 60,000 minus 80 units. Okay. And that is how we try to be arriving at rate. That rate in this case, uh, we have tried to get in this answer. But in that also, just one thing, we wanted weighted average rate. So therefore, you combine last period ka cost with current period cost last period uh, units okay with current period units and then you try to arrive at the total cost divided by the total quantity 5100 so therefore 5100 is your answer now part number seven will be derived from there only beta calculate the amount of abnormal loss during the shortage to be transferred to costing profit and loss account based upon average price so see my average price was 5100 into, I guess, the abnormal loss quantity was 40, no? Just let me try to be seeing it once. Abnormal loss quantity was 40 units. Okay, abnormal loss is always valued at cost. So, therefore, 5100 into 40. So, therefore, this will be 2,4,000. So, this should be your answer. Okay, further. Question number six. Calculate the average number of days for which average inventory is to be held. Now in this no, I might have two answers. I'm not sure to be honest. Okay, not 100% sure what ICA will be doing. Okay, see. Now, if you want to be calculating this, first thing is calculate raw material consumed and then divide by average raw material stock. Okay, so therefore you're going to be doing this, correct? So, something like this. Listen, uh, let me give you this answer first. Then I'll give you the other answer. I think so ICA will be doing this. But I think this makes more sense. Although coincidentally answer is same in both the cases because there is only a small difference. Okay, see first. Listen. Uh, I want to be computing average number of days for which inventory is held. That is 365 days divided by inventory turnover for raw material. How do you compute inventory turnover for raw materials? It is raw material consumed divided by average stock of raw material. How do you compute average stock of raw material? It is opening stock plus closing stock upon two. How do you compute raw material consumed? It is nothing but opening stock plus purchases less closing stock. That is how you compute. Okay, now see. Opening stock of raw material was 5000. Raw material purchased might be 60. But then you all will understand out of that 80 and 40, you all will not consume only, no? 80 was normal loss, 40 is also abnormal loss. So ultimately you will not be consuming. So therefore I have reduced. Either you reduce it separately or you reduce from here. In any case, answer is going to be same only. Less your closing stock. This will give you raw material consumed. So your raw material consumed and then you all have your opening stock. That was 5,000. Closing stock 4,500 divided by 2, 4, 7, 5, 0. So therefore this figure divided by this particular figure, this will be giving you inventory turnover for raw materials. 365 divided by 4750. So therefore, 29 days will be your answer. 29 days will be your answer as such. Okay. Now, I think so. I say might not think that deep. I might be wrong in this. Okay, please uh, don't try to troll me based upon I try to be thinking like this. That is based upon whatever I have dealt with the institute. Okay, they might not be that open to the ideas. Those guys might directly be doing opening stock plus purchases less closing stock. Okay, they might not deduct that 80 and uh, 40 that I have reduced over here. Okay, now in case you will be doing that raw material consume will be 60,500 average stock will still be same only this 
comes 12.7 bit different as such as compared to this but then your final answer still comes to 29 days only you can try to do the calculations on your calci okay so whether you do this upon this or you do this upon this only small decimal amount of difference is there so in end like you know you might have done either this or this answer in any case should be 29 days only that should be the correct answer over here okay so that's it from my side this is your uh, MCQs from question number 6 to question number 10. Not very difficult to be honest, okay, but I think so you all should be knowing that funda that you have to be dividing by number of units that you expect to consume. Okay, that's it for this. I'll see you all in the next question. Question number 11. Now this question was all about labor turnover. Easy question here. There was nothing much in this. Let's try to be reading it. You all have done a similar question in class. Okay. Exactly of the same style. On 1-4-2023, number of workers employed in the factory was 150. This will be opening number of workers during the year. 30 workers resigned and 5 were discharged. So how many in all were removed? 35. Due to resignation and discharge, the same things that were over here, 15 workers were replaced. So we removed or they left, okay, 35 workers left. Out of that, 15 in this case came, okay, means the new workers, we all replaced them, okay. So one sec, 35 uh, in this case went and 15 were replaced. So therefore, 35 minus 15, 20 in end fell, okay, further. For the year 2023-24, labor turnover by separation method will be, okay. These are the four options. So, first of all, separation method, the formula is number of workers separated during the period divided by average number of workers in the period, okay. Into 100, how do you find out average number of workers? That's number of workers at the beginning plus number of workers at the end divided by 2. See, number of workers at the beginning was nothing but 150. That is one thing, okay. Then number of workers at the end, number of workers at the end. So 35 workers in all uh, left the company for any reason, 15 were replaced. So therefore 20. So total in this case was 130. 150 plus 130 divided by 2. So therefore in this case, it will be nothing but 140 over here. Okay, that's it. So 150 plus 130 divided by 2, that is nothing but 140 over here. Once 140 is all together done, now see. Uh, number of workers separated during the period divided by average number of workers in the period into 100. So number of workers separated, 30 workers left, okay, and 5 were discharged, means 30 left by themselves, 5 we all removed. In all, 35 workers were separated, no? Divided by average number of workers into 100. So therefore, it will be nothing but 25%. That's it. So I guess out of all the four answers, 25% should be the answer. So this should be the correct answer. Okay, that is part C over here. That's it. Okay, so this is array eraser. Huh. So in this case, this will be your correct answer. Okay, that's it for question number 11. It was a simple question. So if you were allowed a minute for that, okay, 1.5 to 1.8 into 2 minutes, 3 minutes, I guess this question was quite easy for us to be solving. Okay, so that's it about this question. Okay. Sorry, question number 12, again two marks, let's start it off. This again question was of process costing, but not as complicated or long as the first one. Okay, see, question number 12. A chemical passes through three processes and output of process 1 is transferred to process 2. The input units in process 1 are 58,500 and the output units are 55,200. Okay, normal loss is 2%, rest is abnormal loss. You are required to calculate unit cost of output in process 1. If the total expenses incurred in process 1 are 687,960. Okay, get me the four options. Uh, this, this, get me the four option. I'm used to the MCQ wala thing. Sorry. So 12, 11.76, 12.2 and 12.46. Okay. Now see, uh, when we started away with process costing, how do you compute cost per unit? It is DM plus DL plus GE plus factory overheads less scrap value of normal loss divided by expected output. Now, all these are directly given to you in form of 687,960. Okay, so all the expenses. Less scrap value of normal loss. 
Scrap value of normal loss is not there in this question. So assume to be zero only. What else to do here? So therefore this minus zero divided by expected output. How do you get expected output? Beta V input this much. 2% was supposed to be the normal loss. Okay. So therefore 2% will be 1170. So 58500 was the input. When we input 58500, we were expecting an output of 58500 less 2%. So 57330. So therefore the cost divided by expected output should be giving you all the answer. So therefore divided by. So answer should be 12 rupees per unit. Okay. So therefore that should be the correct answer. So answer is going to be rupees 12. Easy question. Just if you know how to be computing the cost, you will directly arrive at the uh, answer as such. Okay. That's it for question number 12. Let's begin by question number 13. This was of uh, CVP analysis. Super simple question. Okay, read please. PS Limited is facing a downfall in the demand. Marketing team has suggested to reduce the selling price by 5% to compete in the market. Variable cost is 76% of the current selling price. You are required to find out the PV ratio after reducing the price. See, we have to be reducing our price by 5%. Okay. Currently, our variable cost is 76% of the selling price. They are saying if you reduce the selling price by 5%, what will be your new PV ratio? Four options are over here. Okay, see, originally PV ratio was how much that we don't know. But if we say that selling price was 100, variable cost was 76% of that. So 76. Contribution in this case will be 2400 minus 76. Now selling price will be reduced by 5% beta. Okay. So therefore 100 will become now how much? 95. Okay. This will be your new selling price. But unless and until told, variable cost will remain same only. Year. If you're reducing the selling price, how come your variable cost per unit will change? It will be remaining that only. So 95 minus 76 in this case will be giving you all 19. That's it. Okay. So let's compute our PV ratio. How do you compute your PV ratio? Here? Contribution upon sales into 100. 19 upon 95. I guess you all can work it out. It should be coming to 20%. So out of the four options, answer should be this. This should be your correct answer as such. Easy question. I guess most of people must have got it right. Now, whichever questions you are getting right, let me not just say, but you put over there, sir, I got this question correct. Okay. It'll give you good confidence for future also. Will help you in assessing your marks also. Okay. Chali. So this question is altogether done. Let's start it off. This is your chapter of material costing EOQ part. But in this question, no EOQ was given. You have to try to compute other things. Okay, let's do this. In an automotive uh, manufacturing company, a component is manufactured. EOQ quantity is 1500 units. So EOQ is given to you. That is 1500. Cost of placing the order is rupees 100. So this we used to be calling in this case as CA. This is your ordering cost. And the carrying cost per annum is 10%. 10% will be I over here. The cost per unit of the component is rupees 20. So therefore this thing will be CPU. One sec, I, one thing I'm computing for you. CI is nothing but CPU into I beta. So therefore this was 20 into 10%. CI in this case will be rupees 2 per unit per annum. Calculate the annual demand for this specific automotive component. Okay, A 75,000, B 45,500, C 36,000 and D 22,500 units. Okay, now see, now you have to calculate annual demand. Annual demand means A over here, here. annual demand is A. So <clears throat> in this case, no, EOQ. EOQ is nothing but square root of 2ACA upon CI. Okay. Now that is your formula of EOQ. EOQ is given as 1500. So 1500 is square root of 2 into A into CA is nothing but 100. I told you that thing over here. CI is nothing but 2 rupees. I told you over here. Okay. So therefore I square up both the sides. So therefore 1500 square will be 22,50,000 is equal to 100 A. So A should be 22,500 units. So out of the four answers, this should be your correct answer. Okay, that's it for question number 14. Just you should be knowing the formula and try to get uh, A as a balancing figure. That's it for this question. Question number 15. 
in a mutual project both raj and bhuvan are contributing their efforts using identical materials now this question no it's slightly similar to the question that we all have done in labor costing right i guess our question number 3 or something but not exactly same okay so just be careful raj receives bonus on the rowan plan while hal se plan determines bhuvan's bonus okay Standard time allocated for the project is one fifty hours. Raj completes in ninety hours. Bhuvan completes in one twenty hours. So just a sec. There is Raj over here. There is Bhuvan over here. Bhuvan was a guy in Lagan also, I think. So time allowed is one fifty hours. Okay. Time taken in this case is ninety hours over here, and uh, Bhuvan takes one twenty hours. So therefore, this will be nothing but time saved. Time saved is sixty. Time saved is thirty. Okay. Further, the normal hourly rate for Raj is rupees thirty. Normal hourly rate means basic wage rate. Yar, in case you wish to be writing, you all can. So therefore, this is nothing but basic wage rate for Raj is thirty. The total earnings for both the workers are equal. This is a line that will help to a great extent. Further, calculate the normal hourly rate to be paid to Bhuvan. Okay, so you have to be comp uh, computing how much normal hourly rate, the basic wage rate, is being paid to Bhuvan. Okay, these are the four options that are there. Okay, so let's start to be arriving at the answer. Now see, Raj Gaino is paid under Rowan scheme. Okay, Bhuvan is being paid under Halse scheme. Okay, Raj Bhuvan, uh, Rowan Halse. Okay. Total wages for Raj should be equal to total wages to be paid to Bhuvan. So let's compute the total wages for Raj first. That we will be able to compute because we have all the details. So first of all, we all complete compute the basic wages for Raj. How do you compute the basic wages for Raj? He worked for sixty hours. Uh, sorry, he worked for ninety hours, and his basic wage rate was thirty. So therefore, ninety hours into thirty will be two thousand seven hundred. Okay, so. How do you compute your basic wages? Yeah, it is time taken into the basic wage rate, so two thousand seven hundred plus in this case bonus. Now bonus he is being paid under which plan? Rowan plan. So under the Rowan plan, your formula is what? Time saved divided by time allowed into basic wages. So therefore, in this case, time saved. Time saved is nothing but sixty divided by time allowed. Time allowed is nothing but one fifty. Into the basic wages two thousand seven hundred. Okay, so therefore let me just uh, compute this two thousand seven hundred into this is one zero eight zero. So therefore total in this case will be three seven eight zero. That is whatever I've written over here three seven eight zero. This will be the total wages for Raj. Okay, uh, but for Bhuvan one thing that we all do not know what is the basic wage rate. Let that figure be x. Okay, let the basic wage rate be x. So therefore, one twenty x will be his basic wages. That is whatever I've written over here. One twenty x plus he is being paid bonus under the Halse plan. Under Halse plan, it is nothing but fifty percent of time saved. Time saved is nothing but thirty into basic wage rate. That is nothing but x. So fifty percent of thirty x that will be nothing but fifteen x. Okay. So one twenty x plus fifteen x. So therefore, it will be one thirty five x. So therefore, this is one thirty five x. Okay. That's it. So three seven eight zero. Three seven eight zero divided by one thirty five. So therefore, answer should be twenty eight. X is equal to twenty eight. So out of the four options, this should be your correct answer as such. Okay, easy question, but not exactly same as whatever we all have done in class. If you all remember what we all have done in class now at that time, basic wage rate was also same. Now in this case, basic wage rate are not same. Total earnings are same, and you got to be finding out basic wage rate as a balancing figure. Okay, that's it for this question. Now we'll be meeting for part two. Actually, guys. So now our part one is done. Okay, you all can just comment that how many marks you will have got out of thirty. Okay, that will give me like you know a clear idea that where we are right now. Apart from that, let's start to be doing the practical paper now. Now the practical paper, obviously, you have to be trying to be solving it completely. Okay, and that's what we are about to be doing right now. So therefore, this is. All about your normal questions which have to be solved. Let's do a. Uh, this question is going to be there from operating costing chapter number twelve. Okay, you can call that as costing of service sector also. Let's start to be doing that. Uh, language achievers, a renowned institute, specializing in 
TOEFL preparation. You are a commerce student. You might be knowing knowing that test of English as foreign language. Okay, these are the examinations that you have to give and clear in case you want to be going to a foreign university. Has secured a spacious hall for twenty thousand rupees on weekly basis with seating capacity of two hundred and fifty students. The instructor, highly qualified and experienced, is compensated generally with an honorarium of fifteen hundred rupees per lecture. so this language achievers they all are specializing in getting the students prepared for the toefl exams okay so they hire a hall for 20000 rupees on weekly basis remember this thing okay so therefore this is one cost plus in this case they require a instructor highly qualified and experienced and his fees is 1500 rupees per lecture okay Additionally, he receives reimbursement for travel expenses of two hundred rupees per day. Okay, along with the refreshments costing fifteen hundred per week to ensure his comfort and focus during the training sessions. Okay, admin and miscellaneous expenses covering essential utilities and materials are five hundred rupees per week. Okay. language achievers have meticulously planned its curriculum scheduling batches of two lectures per day okay remember this date uh, remember this data two lectures per day five day a week for 30 weeks ensuring comprehensive coverage of the toefl syllabus okay so there are five cost in all that i have tried to highlight over here okay and the batch will be going over for 30 weeks in every week there are five days and uh, every day there are two lectures for the calculate the total cost per batch okay determine the minimum fees to be charged in a batch to cover up the cost if the batch is fully occupied now fully occupied do remember that in this case there are 250 student they are saying if it is fully occupied means there will be a batch of 250 students third calculate the fees to be charged from each student if a batch is 80% filled and the institute aims to achieve a profit margin of 25% on the fees and this question is going to be there for 5 marks let's start it off so now see in this case no for part 1 calculate the total cost per batch i thought i'll try to do part 1 and part 2 together but let's start to be doing say part 1 first calculate the total cost per batch so there are five costs just try to get all the five costs for the entire batch example the first one hall rent 20000 rupees per week okay into how many weeks 30 weeks that is whatever i have done so therefore 20000 Into thirty, so therefore this answer comes of six lakh rupees. Second one, that lecturer will be paid fifteen hundred per lecture. So fifteen hundred into two lectures a day, he is going to be taking into five days a week. Okay, and the lecture will go over for thirty weeks. So therefore four lakh fifty thousand. This will be the second cost. Third one, it is two hundred rupees per day he is paid per day. Ah, so therefore two hundred per day into five days a week into thirty weeks. So therefore that is going to be thirty thousand. Further, there is refreshments fifteen hundred rupees per week. So fifteen hundred per week into thirty weeks. That should be nothing but forty five thousand. That is your next cost. The last one is admin cost. That is five hundred per week. Five hundred per week into the batch will go over for thirty weeks. So therefore, that will be fifteen thousand. You add it up. Total cost per batch should be eleven lakh forty thousand. That should be your answer. Okay, that is your first thing. Second part now. Determine the minimum fees to be charged. The minimum fees per student. In a batch to cover up the cost. If the batch is fully occupied, fully occupied means there will be two fifty students. See, your minimum fee should always be your cost. Okay, our cost is eleven lakh forty thousand rupees per batch. Let's divide eleven lakh forty thousand rupees per batch by the number of students in a batch. That will be nothing but two fifty. You divided answer is going to be four five six zero. That's it. Okay, so this should be your part two of the answer. Then the third one. Calculate the fees to be charged from each student if the batch is eighty percent filled. Just a sec. Eighty. So there are capacity is two fifty. Okay, eighty percent means there will be two hundred students in a batch, and the institute aims to achieve a profit margin of twenty five percent on the fees. Fees means the revenue, the selling price that you are going to be charging to the consumer. Okay, so see, ah, uh, this is our cost. We want a profit margin also. So therefore, what I thought is this is my cost. Add profit, try to arrive at the revenue. Okay. 
Now the profit that we all want, the profit that we all want is 25% of the fees. So therefore, if your revenue is 100, okay, your total cost is 11,40,000. That thing I got from here, okay, I got this answer from here, okay. So we got 11,40,000, right? Profit is 25% of fees then you will be arriving at fees so therefore if this is 100 this is 25 this is 75 please cross multiply so therefore 11 lakh 40 thousand into 25 divided by 75 should be fetching you all this okay uh you add it add it you will be arriving at 15 lakh 20 thousand now 15 lakh 20 is a total revenue that you wish to be collecting but from how many students will there be 250 students in a batch no there'll be 200 students in a batch so therefore answer will be 7600 this is a fees that you should be getting per student quite an easy question even if you all have done say first question of service sector this should be an easy question for you all to be doing that okay that's it about question number one part a Let's start it off with the next one. Question number 1B. Now, again, this is quite a simple question on chapter number 7, Cost Accounting System. In that, there is one part of reconciliation. This question was all about that. Just a note, different professors teach how to make a reconciliation in a different way. I try to do that in a normal way. Okay. So in case you do not like my way, please try to solve the question by your own way. In end, your answer should be same as mine. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, in this question, there's nothing to be done except the reconciliation part. Okay. So let's start to be doing that. X, Y, Z declared a net profit of 2,25,000 based on their financial accounts for the year ending 31st of March 2024. Okay. The profit disclosed in costing books did not match with the financial accounts. Okay. The profit information were revealed. Sorry, the following information were revealed during the scrutiny of both the figures of both the set of books. Okay. So they are saying that in financial accounts, we got a profit of 2,25,000. In costing, we got some different figure. It did not match. So therefore, this was a difference that we all got. Okay. Uh, preliminary expenses written off in financial accounts. This will be expense only in financial. We recorded this expense only in financial accounts, not in cost accounts. Factory overheads overcharged. You can say overcharged or overabsorbed. Okay, it means the same thing in cost accounts. Okay, so therefore this is under or overabsorption. To be very honest, this is overabsorption. We charged a higher amount in costing. Expenses on issue shares in financial accounts. So we issued some, some shares. The expenses of that will be financial expenses. So therefore this is expenses only in financial accounts. Okay. Undervaluation of closing stock in costing. In costing, we had undervaluation of closing stock. So therefore, this was undervaluation of closing stock in costing. In costing, we recorded lesser stock. Further, interest on bank deposits in financial accounts. I guess this should be income only in financial accounts. Okay. So we had some bank deposits. We put the money in the bank. We got interest from there. Such things do not appear in cost sheet, right? They only appear in your uh, financial account. So therefore, this is income only in financial. Under recovery of administration overheads in cost accounts. Okay, so therefore this is under absorption of admin. Further, notional rent on own premises charge in cost accounts. Now this you might be remembering we did specific questions on these also. Notional rent means what? Suppose you are not paying rent because a factory is owned by you. That time your cost sheet might not be comparable with the cost sheet of an other company who is paying rent. Okay. So therefore, in order to be making the books on a par basis, we try to just charge notional rent. Notional rent means you're not paying anything. You're just recording it. So therefore, our cost can be compared with their cost. These kind of things are only done in costing, not anywhere else. Okay. So therefore, this is nothing but uh expense this is expense no okay rent is an expense although a notional rent but it is an expense this is expense only in costing further under recovery of selling overheads in cost account so therefore this is again under absorption of snd overheads in costing bad debts now this line i think many people could have got wrong recovered in financial accounts recovered okay when you recover the bad debts okay like what happens is some people do not record bad debts as an expense in costing okay they try to be thinking it is a financial expense so when bad debts will get recovered again it will not get recorded in costing but it will certainly get recovered in financial accounts so therefore this should be income only 
इन फाइनेंशियल अकाउंट्स ओके इनकम ओनली इन फाइनेंशियल अकाउंट्स प्रिपेयर रिकंसिलेशन स्टेटमेंट टू अराइव एट नेट प्रॉफिट और लॉस एज पर कॉस्ट अकाउंट्स नाउ व्हाट आई डू इन सच क्वेश्चंस वी ट्राई टू मेक एन अकाउंट ओके वी ट्राई टू मेक एन अकाउंट एंड नथिंग एल्स ओके वी कॉल दैट अकाउंट एज मेमोरेंडम रिकंसिलेशन अकाउंट देयर आर टू साइड्स ऑफ इट फाइनेंशियल प्रॉफिट आई एम हाइलाइटिंग द थिंग्स नाउ इन ग्रीन टू गेट यू ऑल द थिंग्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फाइनेंशियल प्रॉफिट इज गिवन टू यू you can record that thing on any side i record it on debit side okay so ultimately this will be your balancing figure i'm cancelling this particular thing out so therefore you do not see this will be your last balancing figure okay first second uh if you are recording financial profit on this side on the other side you will record all those reasons due to which financial profit will go up which is exactly same as costing profit going down then if you are going to be recording costing profit on this side on the other side you are going to be recording all those reasons due to which costing profit will be going up which is exactly same as financial profit will be going down okay so let's start to be doing all the transactions from beginning once more first of all i am covering up two types of transactions at this time okay expenses only in financial accounts one was over here one was over here okay now due to both these things these are expenses only recorded in financial accounts if you record expense only in financial books financial profit will be lower 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 so therefore it will be coming on debit side okay so therefore i must have made a head over here see over here expenses only in financial accounts and i have recorded these two expenses over here okay so one of them is 35 other of them is 30000 that is whatever i have done over here okay now exactly in the same way let's try to be recording the opposite thing income only in financial accounts due to both these things financial profit will be higher so therefore it will be coming on the credit side okay there were two incomes in financial accounts if i do remember one of them was over here of 60000 and other of them was over here that is 50000 so therefore 60 and 50000 so therefore income in financial accounts one is this and one particular figure is this over here okay now done so four things are done let's do the other five things uh then i'll try to be doing three things right now what are these three one is second one is six and one of them is going to be eight all these are under or over absorption okay let's start to be doing the first one factory overheads over charge in cost accounts if you record some expense higher in costing tell me costing profit will be higher or lower if you record some expense higher in costing costings profit will be lower costings profit will be lower so therefore it will be coming on the credit side costing profit the symbol is there for that only so therefore over absorption of overheads in costing so factory overheads this figure is 20000 so therefore i have covered up this also so obviously if over absorption is going to be coming over there and under absorption will be coming on the other side i think i guess there are two under absorptions one of them is admin overheads of 25000 that i have recorded over here okay and other of them in this case is selling overheads okay that i have recorded over here okay so therefore that job is also done further under valuation of closing stock in costing tell me if you have lesser closing stock in costing costing profit will be higher or lower beta lower closing stock means lower profit so therefore costing profit will be lower so therefore it will be coming somewhere on the credit side under valuation of closing stock i must have recorded that somewhere down see over here under valuation of closing stock in costing just let me check amount is correct or not yeah amount is 65000 so therefore this thing is also correct okay job done further notional rent of own premises charge in cost accounts now you recorded some expense only in costing tell me one thing if you record some expense only in costing costing's profit will be higher or lower sir it will be lower so therefore it will be coming on the credit side no that is costing profit will be lower so therefore i must have recorded that over here so expense only in costing notional rent was notional rent 30000 rupees yes notional rent was 30000 rupees so all my things are done try to get costings profit as a balancing figure okay so therefore that figure will be 125000 okay so therefore this should be your answer okay now one thing i might make some arithmetical mistakes to be very honest because i try to make the paper myself sometimes the calculations do uh it 
there is an error so in case you think that there is a calculation error do tell me i will make the correction in my notes okay in case there is a calculation error as such in case you have a confusion sir i to thought like this will i be getting marks you all can put a comment below okay and i shall be responding to it okay chali so this question is all together over done Let's start question number one, part C. Now, this is all about your chapter number fourteen, decision making or marginal costing or CVP analysis. To be very honest, this is one chapter that I specialize a lot because it's like the bigger part of CA final portion is all about this particular thing. This was a good question. If you would have thought from the right kind of a framework, then in that case you should have got this answer correct. Moreover, in case you all have done FM with me, then there is something in FM also that I can try to be saying will be coming over here. Okay, just in a small way, not in a very big way. So, let's see. Please do remember that do not, do not, okay, try to standardize that only the questions that are there in the class will be asked in exams. ICA is investing heavily in trying to make new questions. I am aware of those things. How that you should not be interested, but they are trying to be doing that. So therefore, they are trying to. Test your concepts. They are honestly not trying to test your memory power, and that is why the new course had come. So, if you all started to be realizing also that you will not be able to clear the things with your memory power from now, you will be able to clear only with your good concepts. Okay, so please forget that, like you know. the things that you all have done in past sir i will do this entire thing i will mug up i will pass it will not happen okay so this is part c jc limited has a production capacity of 80000 units per year presently the company is producing 60000 units its cost structure is as follows you all have material cost labor cost and variable overhead so therefore 6 4 and 2 this figure will be 12 okay so these are your variable cost total fixed cost is 3 lakh rupees per annum present selling price is 20 i'll halt over here see if you try to be seeing current data they have a capacity of 80 but they are making 60 so therefore they have 20000 units of spare capacity which those guys are not using currently what is happening 20 rupees is a selling price 12 rupees is a variable cost so therefore they all get contribution of 8 rupees into 60000 units so therefore currently in this case 4 lakh 80000 is going to be their contribution from their fixed cost of 3 lakh rupees will be going so therefore their current profit is going to be 1 lakh 80000 that is their current status okay that figure i have calculated over here that is 1 lakh 80000 okay exactly in the same way so selling price less variable cost contribution number of units total contribution less fixed cost let's proceed further uh from here the question becomes bit interesting in the month of jan 2024 company received an offer from a japanese client to supply 20000 units at a price of 14 per unit with additional shipping cost of 8000 okay so these guys had a spare capacity of 20000 i told you that so now you have got an offer from uh, a foreign client okay at 14 rupees but you will need to ship the goods to them so therefore your shipping cost is going to be 8000 okay do remember this so this 20 rupees i think must be i think so this 20 rupees is your selling price locally locally could be meaning say india okay let's start to be saying that okay now you have got an offer from a foreign client okay on the basis of change in profit advise a company whether the offer should be acceptable or not see it's very simple currently you are earning 1 lakh 80000 rupees of profit just that now you are getting an extra offer for 20000 units that you are going to be supplying to a japanese client okay but you have to supply at what rate beta 14 if you can get anything extra then you should be interested if you get anything extra that's what those guys told on the basis of change in profit it's simple here see this part is very simple i'll tell you why you are going to be selling at 14 rupees your variable cost will still be 12 rupees only okay into 20000 units you are going to be supplying so therefore you are going to be earning 40000 rupees extra in terms of contribution but out of that 8000 rupees is going to be going as your shipping charges so therefore 40000 minus 8000 you will be getting extra profit of 32000 if you get extra profit then you should be interested as such okay that's what i'm about to be doing and that is whatever i must have written over here see 
कैलकुलेशन ऑफ एडिशनल प्रॉफिट फोर्टीन माइनस ट्वेल्व विल गिव यू टू इन टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड फोर्टी थाउजेंड इज अ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन लेस शिपिंग कॉस्ट विल बी गिविंग यूर थर्टी टू सो देर एक्सेप्ट द प्रपोजल पार्ट वन इज सिंपल एक्सेप्ट द प्रपोजल सो ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ फाइनेंशियल डेटा ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ फाइनेंशियल डेटा इन दैट पर्टिकुलर केस यू शुड बी एक्सेप्टिंग इट फर्दर विल योर एडवाइस बी डिफरेंट इफ द कस्टमर इज अ लोकल वन नॉ समबडी कैन ऑलवेज बी थिंकिंग सर वट डिफरेंस डज इट मेक इफ द कस्टमर इज अ लोकल वन Will shipping cost not be incurred? Now that could be one thing to be honest. But honestly, I don't even know that. If you transfer, say, locally within India, because we don't know whatever is our current country, it is nowhere given that it is India. Somebody can be saying, sir, this must be the trick. Okay, that if suppose it is transferred locally, then shipping cost will not be coming. So therefore, if shipping cost will not be coming, so sir, then. this figure will become zero and this will become 40000 now that could be a probable answer that could be a probable answer okay but i'm not going to be going for that answer i don't think so like you know that is whatever is the purpose of asking you the question i think the purpose is will your advice be different if the customer is a local one see i think so those guys are asking you this question because they want to be knowing your strategy i think so okay uh if somebody has thought like that i'm not saying it is wrong or something but ica might not have that answer i think so the purpose of asking is to make you all think this see if you go, are going to be selling locally only try to be thinking that 60000 units you are selling locally okay at 20 rupees now if an extra customer comes now if a customer comes okay look lo locally only and he tells you i will buy only at 14 rupees not up any more than that okay then in that case financially it is better for you okay you will either make 40000 rupees or you will make 32000 that depends upon whether shipping cost will get incurred or not but you will get extra for sure okay but you all will understand then there will be differential pricing for your 60000 units you are going to be charging normal customers at what price beta you are going to be charging them 20 rupees But for these twenty thousand units, you are only going to be charging how much rupees? Yar, in this case, fourteen rupees. Try to be thinking if those customers to whom you are selling sixty thousand units, those guys come to know about that you are also selling at fourteen rupees, they might also start to be asking for that much amount of discount. Why should they not be getting? See, whenever it was a Japanese client, you know that selling price will not be affecting this selling price, correct? Because it is like you know two different countries. Try to be thinking that this Casio Calci, suppose in India gets sold at four hundred rupees. Are you ever aware that in Japan is it is getting sold for? 300 we are not even aware like you know what is happening in japan same thing over here also so if this customer is a local one i do not think so it will be a good business strategy to have a differential selling price in this case of 20 rupees for the 60000 units and 14 uh, rupees for these extra so i do not think so it will be a good strategy i have given the answer in that particular manner okay in case somebody has the other part you all can write it okay i don't know it will be treated uh, correct or not but i have thought like this okay so see what i have written bit in short only if the customer is a local customer it will be a wrong strategy to sell to a new customer at 14 while to the current customer it is selling at 20 hence it should not be accepted okay you can write one other line also if the existing customers come to know about it they will start to be asking discount over there and company will be losing in big terms okay for the so this is part 1 this is part 2 let's see part 3 if the japanese offer for supply of 30000 units to a price of 14 part supply of the order not accepted so now you try to be thinking that japanese guy know who had given an offer of 20000 now he gives an offer only for 30000 okay and part is not acceptable he says either supply me 30 or do not supply me uh, anything and shipping cost is treated as a variable cost okay analyze the impact on profit of gc uh, limited if the order is accepted see Currently, you are selling sixty thousand units locally. Okay, tell me one thing. Do you think that you were selling the sixty thousand units to one single customer? Will it be like that? I don't think so. You are going to be selling sixty thousand units to many customers, right? Okay. If I say I sell one lakh units in a year, that doesn't mean I sell one lakh units like you know to one single customer. I sell to many customers. Okay. Your capacity was how much? Eighty thousand. Now you had twenty thousand spare capacity. A Japanese guy comes. He says, "I want thirty thousand units from you, either thirty or nothing." 
Okay, so I'm trying to be evaluating. Is it a good deal? Is it not a good deal? So what should be done at that time? If you're going to be accepting this, then in your own country, you will be only able to sell 50,000 units because 80,000 is my capacity and 30,000 I'm going to be sending to Japan. So therefore, I will be left with only capacity of 50,000 that I'll be selling in India. So therefore, currently, this is whatever is happening. You are earning a profit of 1,80,000. Now you're trying to be thinking, what happens if I accept the Japanese offer? If I'm going to be doing that, 50,000 units in this case will be uh, done locally and 30,000 will be offered for that Japanese client. Okay. They are asking, would you like to be doing this? If the profit will be far more than this, then I'm interested, else I'm not interested. And shipping cost will be a variable cost. Now variable cost means C, for 20,000 units, shipping cost was 8,000. Now for 30,000 cross multiply, no, for 20,000, it was 8,000 for 30,000 units shipping cost will become how much that'll be nothing but 12,000. Okay. Now let's start to be doing it. Okay. So therefore see what I have done over here. Total capacity is 80. If the Japanese offer comes for 30 company will be only able to sell 50,000 units locally. Shipping cost for this order will be 80,000 to 30,000 upon 20,000 that is 12,000. See, now you will be getting your profit from two sources. One's local and the other will be in this case the Japanese order. Okay, so therefore the Japanese order. Selling price 20 less 12 contribution 8. Now this becomes 50,000 units. Very important. So total contribution is going to be 4 lakhs. Less fixed cost over here was 3 lakhs. So therefore profit will be 1 lakh from India, from local. Okay. But from Japan, 14 minus 12 will be giving you all two. Number of units in this case now will become 30,000. Okay. Further, total contribution will be uh, 60,000. Shipping cost over here will become 12,000. Now, if you want, you can convert shipping cost into per unit cost also. Final cost will come same. Those people who might have the doubt. So therefore, profit from Japanese offer is going to be 48,000. If I add up this and if I add up this, total profit will now be 1,48,000. Beta, current profit was 1,80 over here without the offer also. If you accept that offer, your profit is going to be falling down from 1,80 to 1,48. So therefore, this offer should not be accepted as profit will fall down from this figure to this particular figure. As per me, this should be the answer of this entire question. It was a tricky question to be honest. I don't think so many people would have got part 2 and part 3 correct. If you have got it, then it's excellent thinking. Okay. And in part two, you might have done the financial part, but I do not think so. Part two was all about the financial part. I think it was all about the business strategy. And I try to get that hint from how the question is framed. Okay. Because over here, it was told on the basis of change in profit. Okay. And over here, will your advice be different if the customer is a local one? So if it is going to be a local one, then business strategy will come into middle. Okay. Whereby you are going to be charging two different prices for local sales only. So therefore, at that time, you should be commenting like this. Okay. So that's it about this entire question. Chale guys, now we'll start away with question number two, part A. Now in this question, no one thing. This question looks very similar to one of the questions that was there in the module and same question was there in our books also. We were making the cost sheet at 30% and at 100% and we were going wherever the profit is higher. This question looks like that, but it is slightly different. Okay, now what is different that you'll have to read the question only. See, please do remember one thing. ICAI is coming to this thing. In case you all have not realized, this is to all the future students. Uh, that they are trying to merge one chapter with another chapter and trying to come out with mixed questions. So please apply your concepts, not your memory power. Okay, let's do this. Uh, question number two part A. MNP Limited has a capacity to produce 84,000 units of a product every month. Okay, month. Further, its prime cost per unit at various levels are as follows. So prime cost, prime cost at 10%, uh, it is 50 per unit, 20%, 48, 30%, 46, 44, 42, 40, 38, 36, 34, 32. You might be in, enjoying economies of large scale. You all will understand if you operate at a higher level, you might do purchasing in bulk that will reduce your material cost. Okay. It might happen like that. You might train the workers. So therefore they all work faster. That might reduce your labor cost, etc., etc. So do remember, has a capacity to produce 84,000. So therefore, 84,000 must be 
ओके फर्दर इट्स प्राइम कॉस्ट कंसिस्ट ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल कंज्यूम डायरेक्ट वेजेस एंड एक्सपेंसेस नाउ दिस वर्ड इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर मी ओके इन द रेशो ऑफ थ्री इज टू टू इज टू वन सो दे फोर वट एवर इज इट्स प्राइम कॉस्ट वट एवर इज इट्स प्राइम कॉस्ट ओके दैट इज देयर इन द रेशो ऑफ थ्री इज टू टू इज टू वन so 3 will be raw material 2 will be direct wages and 1 will be direct expenses in the month of jan 2024 the company worked at 40% level okay so therefore in jan they were working at 40% level so just to say 84000 into 40% so therefore they were producing 33600 units so their cost in this case was 44 rupees per unit okay this was prime cost okay further and raw materials purchased not consumed beta raw materials purchased please underline this word raw materials purchased amounted to 840000 in the month of feb now this is feb 2024 the company worked at 100% capacity and raw materials was purchased for 1646400 okay so therefore in the month of feb they had worked at 100% so therefore this must be their prime cost as such okay and all their costs are broken up into raw material consumed direct labor and direct expenses in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1 okay further it's a policy of the company to maintain opening stock equal to 1/3 of closing stock of raw material so opening stock of raw material will be 1/3 of the closing stock of raw material okay now everybody knows this opening stock add purchases less closing stock will be giving you all raw materials consumed okay so therefore if this figure is x this figure will be 1/3 of x okay because opening stock is 1/3 of this further factory overheads are recovered at 60% of direct wages okay fixed administration expenses part of production cost and fixed selling and distribution expenses are 2 lakh 1600 and 1 lakh 68000 respectively okay during the month of jan 2024 the company sold 33600 units at 68.8 okay the variable distribution cost amounted to 1.5 per unit sold okay fine further the management of the company chalks out a plan for the month of feb 2024 to sell its whole output at 61 per unit by incurring the following further expenses okay whole output means 84000 units please do remember in the month of jan no they were working at 40% capacity but in the month of feb they wish to be working at their full capacity obviously instead of selling 33600 units if you are going to be selling 84000 units you might have to reduce your selling price no further so they are saying that in feb we will be able to sell the entire output at 61 okay but provided we incur the following further expenses company sponsors a television program on every sunday at a cost of 26250 per week there are four sundays in the month of feb okay further high tea program every month to potential customers at a cost of 1 lakh 5000 special items costing 105 on sale of dozen units okay further lucky draw scheme is introduced every month by giving first prize of 1 lakh second prize of 80 third prize of 40 so 1 lakh plus 80 plus 40 2 lakh 20 plus four consolation prize of 8000 each Four consolation prize of eight thousand each. That means thirty-two thousand. So one lakh plus eighty plus forty-two lakh twenty. Two lakh fifty-two thousand will be the total cost. Further, in the month of two thousand twenty-four, there is significant savings in material cost per unit due to entry of new suppliers in the market and savings in per unit cost of direct wages and direct expenses due to introduction of new policy by the management. This is whatever I told you all. You all will understand. Over here, your cost was forty-four. Over here, your cost will be thirty-two. obviously because now you are going to be operating at a very high scale so therefore your cost might get reduced no prepare a cost sheet for the month of jan and feb showing prime cost with different elements of prime cost factory cost cost of production and total profit earned okay that's what we are about to be doing right now so see <clears throat> you got to be making cost sheet for the month of jan and for the month of feb over here we are operating at 40% over here we wish to be operating at 100% okay and in your cost sheet try to show all the ingredients of prime cost try to show factory cost cost of production and total cost total cost now i should be meaning cost of sales i think okay and the profit on let's start to be doing that okay see what i did i've made a simple cost sheet okay cost sheet for the two months one is jan and one is feb 
Obviously, at Jan, it is 40%. That means 33,600 units. In the month of Feb, we are operating at 100%. So, obviously, that means 84,000 units. Okay. Let's start to be doing simple cost sheet. Okay. I have not tried to show much amount of details, but I hope that you all will understand. Now, first thing, I have prime cost with me. Okay. I have prime cost with me. So, therefore, prime cost, please check over here two numbers, 44 and 32. Pick up your calci. 44 and 32. So 44 at 40 percent, 32 at uh, 100 percent. So 44 into 33, 600 units. So therefore, that will be this particular figure. Okay. Same way over there, 32 into 84,000. That is going to be this particular figure. Okay. So therefore, prime cost is all sorted. And that will be now getting broken up into three parts. Which three parts, beta? Material, labor and direct expenses material labor and direct expenses material labor and direct expenses okay uh this will be one thing okay this will be one thing further add factory overheads now see factory overheads it was given to you over here factory overheads are recovered at 60 percent of direct wages so take your direct wages over here uh this is your direct wages here your labor means your direct labor okay take 60 percent of that beta so 492 800 into 60% that will be giving you all this figure same way 896000 into 60% okay that should be giving you all this particular figure you add it you will be arriving at factory cost now some people must have done must have done this error sir you have written material consumed over here materials purchased is given you should record that no in your cost sheet what eventually comes is materials consumed so i have recur i have written material consumed Sir, you should show complete details. I 100% agree. So, materials consume later on. I will break it off into three parts. Opening stock plus purchases less closing stock. I will try to be doing that in just a while. That I can show by the way of a support note also. If you want, you can show that over here also. Whatever I have done later, you can do that particular thing over here also. Okay, that's not a problem. Okay, so... Then there is fixed admin overheads. You all can check it up over here. Fixed admin as a part of production cost and fixed SND are this much and this much. So 2,1600 is your administration cost, which is dependent upon production. So therefore, this should be giving you all cost of production. Okay. And then SND expenses. Okay. See now. Uh, say this will be your cost of production as well as cost of goods sold, whatever you wish to be writing. Okay. Now, fixed SND. Now, it was given to you. I just now read this thing. So, fixed s and is 1,68,000 per month. So, 1,68,000, obviously, no matter, you are going to be operating at 40 or 100%. Fixed s and is fixed s and only will remain same. And there was variable distribution expenses to the extent of 1.5 per unit sold. So, 1.5 per unit, 33,600 into 1.5, that should be giving you all this figure. 84,000 into 1.5, that should be giving you all this figure. Just one thing, many people try to be thinking that I am related to the institute and I get the solutions from somewhere. Okay, it is never ever like that. Because what happens is that many times it has happened that I make one video whereby I try to say a few controversial things that I say could be doing something like this. And then all the students start to be writing all nonsense things. And then when the suggested comes out, they start to be realizing that whatever I told, that was only true thing. Okay. So therefore, many people like, you know, they all try to be saying you get, I do not, I'm not related also to the institute. Okay. I'm just a chartered accountant. I pay the fees once and that also, I don't remember when was the last time I paid the membership fees also. Chalo, let me not talk personal. So therefore, this is your variable distribution. Further, if you're going to be operating at 100%, you need to be incurring one, two, three and four costs. Okay. So therefore, let's start to be incurring these costs. So first of all, we are going to be sponsoring a television program 26,250 per week and there'll be four Sundays. Okay. So 26,250 into four Sundays. So one lakh five, one lakh five. I must have recorded over here. This is the sponsorship. Then there is T of one lakh five that I must have recorded over here. This is T of one lakh five thousand. Then further, there is a special gift, which will be costing 105 per unit. Uh, special gift item costing 105 on sale of a dozen units. Okay. So 105 for a dozen. So divided by 12 beta. Okay. So you're going to be selling 84,000 units divided by 12. These many dozens. Okay. Into 105 per dozen. 
सेवन लैख थर्टी फाइव दैट इज हाउ आई हैव कैलकुलेटेड दिस प्लीज इन एग्जाम्स यू गॉट टू बी शोइंग दोज कैलकुलेशन हेयर आई हैव ट्राई टू बी स्पीडिंग अप द प्रोसेस दैट इज वाई नॉट डन एंड लकी ड्रॉज आई थिंक सो लकी ड्रॉज आई रिटर्न ओवर हेयर टू लैख फिफ्टी टू थाउजेंड आई थिंक दिस फिगर आई हैव रिटर्न रॉन्ग ओवर हेयर दिस शुड बी टू लैख फिफ्टी टू थाउजेंड ओके जस्ट लेट मी ट्राई टू नाउ क्रॉस चेक आई एम कंप्यूटिंग ऑल द थिंग्स थ्री फोर टू सेवन टू हंड्रेड प्लस वन लैख सिक्सटी एट थाउजेंड प्लस वन लैख ट्वेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड प्लस वन लैख फाइव थाउजेंड प्लस वन लैख फाइव थाउजेंड प्लस सेवन लैख थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड प्लस टू लैख फिफ्टी टू थाउजेंड सो दे फोर दिस फिगर इज नॉट दिस इट इज फोर नाइन वन एट टू डबल जीरो ओके दिस इज नथिंग बट योर कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्स ओके वी हैव डन कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्स टिल हेयर ओके फर्दर वन अदर थिंग सेल्स Now over here you are going to be selling thirty three six hundred units. Over here you are going to be selling eighty four thousand units, and there is a difference price. There is a differential price. Over here you are selling at sixty eight point eight, and over here you are going to be selling at sixty one. So therefore, into sixty eight point eight and into sixty one. So therefore, thirty three six hundred into sixty eight point eight. So this will be your sales over there eighty four thousand into sixty one. So this is your sales. Okay, subtract four ninety one, four nine one eight two hundred. So therefore, your profit will be coming to two zero five eight hundred. Okay, and over here, I guess profit is correct only. Over there, I assume that it must be correct. In case, beta, there is some calculation error. You all can always try to tell me. I am slightly poor in those things. Two one nine four zero eight zero. so this should be correct only i think okay these should have been your profits as such okay now this question is still not completely done because one thing that we all have not done see direct material consumed is there i would like to show detailed cost sheet okay so therefore this direct material consumed i have copied down over here see 739 200 and 134400 these two numbers i have copied down okay this is my direct materials consumed okay raw material consumed must be opening stock plus purchases less closing stock now purchases was there with you beta in the question only see over there beta this is 840000 purchases and over here it was 1646400 so i have written those purchases over here okay so 8401646400 1646, now what those guys had told me further that opening stock is one third of your closing stock so therefore i have taken this figure as one third of x and this figure i have taken as x okay so therefore this plus this minus this will be giving you this that equation i showed over here one third of x plus 840 minus x will be giving you this particular figure of 739 200 okay bas once you all do that two third x is equal to this x is equal to this particular figure that's it your job is completely done okay sir for feb 2024 it is very easy why closing stock becomes opening stock Okay, one fifty one two hundred closing stock becomes opening stock. Further, in this case, add up this. Ah, uh, less your closing stock. Okay, closing stock. This figure is one third of this, or this figure is three times of this. So therefore, once you all do that, you have this figure. Multiply that thing by three, you will arrive at four fifty three six hundred, and that will tally with your materials consumed also. So therefore, our answer must be correct. Okay. Now, if you all want this working that I have showed over here, no, okay, that is this part, beta. Okay, this, 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 this that I am highlighting right now. Okay, this instead of showing separately, you can be showing that particular thing over here also. Okay, that is above this particular data. Okay, just I didn't want to try to mess it up much. Okay, so therefore these should be your profits as such: one one seven six hundred two zero five eight hundred. Okay, in the uh. final answers that you all have okay that the uh, pdf you will be getting all the things rectified only because few errors i realized when i start to be solving also okay chali so this questions all together done chali guys now it's question number 2b now this question was there on labor costing this is one of the last questions that is there in our book okay but there were two extra things in that if you have thought properly then it's going to be quite easy okay uh there are four requirements of this question out of that one was something new but we all had discussed that thing in class and uh, one was a equation kind of a thing that you had to be trying to resolve first let me just read it i guess most of people will be able to remember let's do this 
In a factory, there are 50 workers working for 8 hours per day, including 30 minutes for lunch break. Working for 160 days during the 6 months ending on 31st of December 2023. During this period, the total employees cost was 3,90,000. This 3,90,000 is very important for me. Okay. The management of the factory has decided the overtime premium rates for the month of Jan 2024 as under. Okay. Sunday and holidays will be getting 180% of the basic wage rate. Now, in the question that we all had in class, basic wage rate was given to you. Now, basic wage rate is not given, but instead of that, the total amount paid to the employees for those uh, six months is given to you. Then before and after normal working hours, that is 160% of basic wage rate. Okay. Further, during the last six months ending on 31st of December 2023, the following hours were worked. Normal time, 56 to 50. Sundays and holidays. Obviously, Sunday and holidays will be paid 180% of your basic wage rate. That is one thing. And before and after normal working hours. Suppose their normal hours are 10 to 6. If you work before 10 or after 6, then that comes under this category. You will be paid 160% of the basic wage rate. And those hours in this case were 3000. Total hours were 60,000. Now, in case you just want an idea, how did this 60,000 also come? Okay, you can try to be computing it. 50 workers working for 8 hours per day, including 30 minutes for lunch break. So, therefore, you subtract that. So, therefore, 50 workers working for 7.5 hours for 160 days. So, take your calc, 15 into 7.5 into 160 days should be matching with 60,000. Okay, that's how 60,000 comes. In case somebody wishes to be writing 50 workers into 7.5 hours per day into 160. Okay, that's how this answer comes. So, few things. Whatever is the basic wage rate, we do not know that. We don't know that. Okay. But if suppose basic wage rate is suppose X. If you work on Sunday and ho uh, holidays, we'll pay you 1.8 X. If you work on any weekday, okay, before and after the normal working hours, we'll be paying you all 1.6 X. Okay. And likewise, these are the number of hours in those six months. Okay. So normal hours were this. Sundays and holidays was this and before and after was this. During the month of Jan 2024, the factory worked on a job BX in the following manner. So there was one job that was there. Okay, called as BX. On that, how much was the time spent? Normal working hours were 2400. Obviously, this figure is part of this. Overtime on Sundays and holidays, obviously, this is part of this. Overtime before and after normal working, 400 uh, men hours, yeah, labor hours, whatever you wish to be calling, that is going to be part of this. In all, 3000 hours were worked on this particular job. You are required to calculate the labor cost chargeable to job BX, okay, and overheads in each case. First, where overtime is worked regularly in the whole year on, sorry, as a policy on account of shortage of workers, okay. So, there is shortage of workers. So, if there is shortage of workers, what option you have? You tell your existing workers to do overtime. Okay, so it is kind of a normal situation. So, overtime is nothing like, you know, unusual. It is a normal situation that keeps on happening on a daily basis. Okay, where overtime is worked irregularly to meet the requirements of the production. Okay, so overtime is not a normal feature. It happens sometimes if suppose we are going to be doing more production. Okay. Where overtime is worked at the request of the customer to complete the job in time. Now, the customer comes, he gives me the order for job BX. He tells me that I want the goods by this particular date. I say I do not have workers. Okay, so I will not be able to do. He say you tell your current workers to do the overtime. Okay, and I will bear that overtime cost. Okay, this is the situation. Fourth one, where overtime is worked on the accounts of floods in the area. So, overtime in this case is done uh, on the account of floods in that area. Okay. So, let's start it off. See. Now, first thing is I do not know the basic wage rate. Okay. So, what you are supposed to be doing? Let the basic wage rate, let the basic wage rate in this case be X. So, therefore, 56 to 50 hours I pay at the rate of X. Then, uh, 750 hours I pay at the rate of 1.8x because it is 180%. 
and 3000 hours you are going to be paying at the rate of 1.66 okay so this is first this is second and this particular figure is third now this total has to be working out to 390 so from where did 390000 come it's simple it was given to you in the question 390000 was the total employee cost okay so 390000 you make this equation you try to be solving i've done that job for you Calculation of normal wage rate para, let it be x. So therefore, 56 to 15 to x plus 715 to 1.8 x plus 3000 into 1.66. That should be equal to 390. Please work it out yourself. Okay, x will be 6.25 para. 1.8 x, so take 6.25 multiplied by 1.8, so 11.25. And 1.6 x is going to be in this case 10 rupees per hour. Okay. Now, once this entire thing is done, okay, now we can try to be preparing some statement. Okay, now listen to me very carefully. See. A uh, normal rate is the normal time is 56 to 50 hours. We'll be paying at the rate of 6.25. Then uh, over time on Sundays, we are going to be paying at 11.25. These are the same answers 1, 2, and 3 that I've put forward in this table. And over time before and after will be 10 rupees. Okay. The number of hours that were given to you, I've put them over here 56 to 50 from here, beta. So these were the number of hours. Obviously, once you multiply, that should add up to 3,90,000. Okay, that's quite simple. So it should be coming to 3,90,000. So this into this, this into this, this into this will be giving you all this answer. Okay. So therefore, uh, answer will be coming to 3,90,000. Okay, then further. Further in this case, job BX. Listen. For job BX, how many hours were spent beta? 2,400, 200 and 400. Okay, these were the hours. Those I've brought it down over here. And these hours will be paid at this rate, this rate and this rate. So therefore, please multiply. This will be giving you cost for job X. Please do remember this payment obviously is part of this particular payment. This is one of the many jobs that the company has taken. Okay, now see. Let me tell you the four situations. What was the, what was the first situation? Now, first situation over here was like this. Where overtime is worked regularly in the whole year as a policy on the account of shortage of the workers. See, now overtime for them is a usual feature. If you have shortage of the workers, to be very honest, okay, you'll have to be resorting to overtime to do the production, right? Okay, what else will you do? Now, just giving you a basic example. Suppose I have a person over here who works with me. Every day he works, say for seven hours. I tell him, I'll pay you at the rate of 100 per hour. Okay. And in case you will be doing overtime, okay, I'll pay you at the rate of 200 rupees per hour. But I've observed this thing. Actually, I require two people to be very honest. But there is shortage of person. So therefore, every day he does overtime. So therefore, 200 rupees I will be paying. Okay, so therefore what I will be thinking in my mind, I always pay 900 rupees in a day of eight hours. So therefore, his effective rate is 900 divided by 8. That is 112.5. Okay. I will not be thinking like, you know, 100 per hour, 200 per hour. I will not be thinking because this happens a lot. So therefore, if it happens a lot, your rate will always be higher. Because if he was not there at that time, I would have hired another guy. Okay. To, to complete the job in those 7 hours only. That in any case would have increased my cost. No. So therefore, why not to increase the rate over here? So therefore... What I'm going to be doing, ultimately, you will be paying the workers 3,90,000 for working for 60,000 hours in those six months. So therefore, we call this thing as the average rate or some people call that thing as average inflated wage rate. So 3,90,000 divided by 60,000, 3,90 divided by 60,000. So therefore, 6.5 per hour. This is your weighted average rate. You can also call that thing by that. So therefore, 6.5 per hour, ultimately in my mind, I will not be thinking about this rate, this rate and this rate. I will always be thinking, yeah, ultimately I pay 6.5 per hour. And this job is going to be taking how many hours? Yeah, 3,000. So therefore, 3,000 into 6.5. So therefore, total labor cost to be charged to this job. Total labor cost to be charged to this particular job will be 3,000 into 6.5. That is 19,500. That is your first answer. Okay. Mark, mark you, all your four answers, four parts are totally different. Okay, so let's start to be doing them. First part is all together done. Let's go over to the second part. 
Second part was where overtime is irregular. It's worked irregularly to meet the requirements of the production. Now, what does this thing mean? It means that usually overtime is not required. But if ever the demand is higher, then in that case, we will tell the workers to do the overtime. Now, in such case, it is very simple. Okay, listen to me very carefully. Overtime is not usually done. So, whatever is the extra payment that you are doing in overtime, whatever is the extra payment that you are doing in overtime, that should not be charged as part of labor cost because it is not usually done. And obviously, if it is not labor cost, it will be part of your factory overheads because this cost is still incurred in the factory only. Okay, so therefore, what we are going to be doing, listen. Where overtime is worked irregularly to meet the requirement of the production. See, you tell me one thing, even if this job, BX would have come, okay, it would have taken how many hours here? 3,000. Okay, it would have taken 3,000 hours to be completing. Now, see, my mentality goes like this. If this job would have come, it would have taken 3,000 hours for sure. Now, I do not have enough 3,000 normal hours. I have 2,400 in the normal time and 200 and 400 were taken from that overtime. But I'm saying what? I'm saying that whatever is the extra payment that you are doing, it is not a normal event. It doesn't happen every time. It happens occasionally because of the requirements of the production. Suddenly, suppose one order comes from the customers. Okay. So at that particular time, I try to tell my workers, please do overtime. No. Okay. We have to be completing the order. So therefore, to meet the require. So therefore, this extra that you are going to be paying, this extra that you are going to be paying will be nothing but factory over it. So therefore, your labor cost will be 3000 into 6.25. Okay. This will be nothing but your labor cost. Let me read this part first. Basic wage rate is charged to the job and overtime premium is charged to factory overheads as under C. Employees cost will be 3000 into 6.25. Okay. That is nothing but 18,750. This will be nothing but your labor cost that will get charged to this job. Labor cost that will be getting charged to this job means if you ever prepare cost sheet of this particular job. Okay. Over there, you are going to be writing direct labor as 18,750. And remaining overheads will be charged to the entire factory as part of factory overheads. Okay. So therefore, the remaining means what? See, 3000 hours at the rate of 6.5 has already gone as labor cost. Okay. Now what is left? See, 2400 hours in any case were paid at 6.25 only. 200 hours were paid at 11.25. Out of that, 6.25 is normal. Remaining is overtime. So therefore, 200 into 11.25 minus 6.25 and over here 400 into 10 minus 6.25 okay you can be computing that that will be coming to 2500 rupees okay now a easier way to be doing that a easier way that i say is not done but a easier way to be doing that okay you can directly take your labor cost okay you can directly take the cost that we got for job bx 21250 out of that 18750 is going to be your direct labor cost Remaining will be nothing but your factory over there. That is 2,500 over here. Okay, that's it. This is your answer to part two, where overtime is worked irregularly to meet the requirement of the production. Okay, this is your second part. The third one, where overtime is worked at the request of the customer to complete the job in time. See, it's simple. The customer comes, he says, I want this particular job to be done by you. I say, I do not have uh, enough time. I do not have the workers. He told, he tells, tell your current workers to do the overtime. Whatever is the extra cost, I will pay. Okay. Now he's going to be paying the extra cost. Okay. For doing the overtime. So then overtime, entire cost will be getting incurred because of this particular job. So therefore, in that case, what we are going to be doing, uh, this entire thing, this entire thing, 2250 plus 4000 will be getting charged to this particular job only. If you'll start to be thinking, this is nothing but direct labor. Direct labor means what? Any labor that is incurred because of this job. Okay. So therefore, this extra cost is getting incurred extra because of this particular job. Okay. So therefore, that much you are going to be charging over here only. So therefore, 2250 plus 4000 rupees in this case, we'll be getting charged to this particular job. So therefore, ultimately, it means, see, this in any case has to be getting charged to this particular job only, but 2250 and 4000 will also be getting charged to this particular job. So in and 21250 will be getting charged in this case to this particular job. So therefore, 
is also charged. Hence, the labor cost to be charged to Job Z will be twenty one thousand two fifty. This includes the overtime cost also. So therefore, even this and this will be getting charged to this job. Okay. Now this is the third one, the fourth one. We did not have this fourth one as part of our uh, question that we all had in our books and in our modules. But I discussed this thing right at the time that we all had done. Okay, where overtime is worked on the account of floods in the area. Now, try to be thinking. Floods will come. Is it our mistake? No. Okay, it is an unusual event. Okay, so floods came. Normally, workers could not be working. So therefore, ultimately, like you know that uh, the workers. Had to be resorting to overtime. Now this is an unusual event. All unusual events are never charged to costing. Sorry, are never ever charged to the job because it is not because of the job. It is an unusual event, uncontrollable event. In that case, whatever is the overtime cost, that should be getting charged to costing profit and loss account. Is a loss that company will have to be bearing due to such events. Okay, so therefore, if you will see. This figure plus this figure. This is the overtime figure. Okay, this overtime cost had come because of floods. Okay, so therefore this cost is unusual cost should be getting charged to costing profit and loss account, where overtime is worked on the account of floods in the area. Entire overtime cost should be getting charged to costing profit and loss account. But then do remember, fifteen thousand rupees, fifteen thousand rupees will still be getting charged to the job only. I have not written. Might be in the final uh, PDF that you all will download. I'll put that thing also, but. Fifteen thousand rupees will be getting charged to this particular job. That is nothing but the labor cost for this job. No, the overtime was because of the flood. So therefore, the overtime cost in this case will be getting charged to costing profit and loss account. Okay. Now this was slightly a tricky question to be honest because if you try to be relating this question with the question that we all had done over there the wage rates were given here first thing you have to find out the wage rates and three parts were same but last part I don't think so was a super difficult one if you would have thought it is an unusual event what do we do for uh, abnormal loss. This is something like abnormal loss only floods had come, so therefore we started to work for overtime. You transfer it to costing PNL account exactly in the same way. Okay, sorry. This question is altogether done. Sorry, guys. We'll start away with question number three. A. This is on activity based costing. Now, as I always say, whatever we do is always head and tail of everything. This activity based costing. Those people who have taken our course will be remembering. This was a question that I had asked in test to you all. This is exactly of that particular style only. Okay, so in fact, just the numbers are changed. In fact, the product names are also same only. P and Q. Let's do this. GST Limited is a multi-product company. The production and the cost details of its two products, P and Q, are given below. So P and Q. uh of its two products these might not be the only two products that you will realize in just a while but we are trying to find out the data for p and q so quantity produced 9000 7200 direct material 72000 50000 direct labor as 800 600 purchase requisitions i am totaling up this thing not for any other reason but just a very small one that i'll let you all know in just a while a uh, purchase requisition means how many times you all have purchased means you purchase the raw material correct so how many times you place the order for raw material then production runs how many times you set up the machine so therefore 144 plus 108 so therefore this figure is going to be 252 further 27 plus 118 uh sorry 27 plus 18 and this data is what beta Quality inspection. So number of times we did the quality inspection. Further, direct wage rate is fourteen point five per hour. Okay. Presently the company uses a single overhead rate based upon direct labor hours. Okay. Overheads incurred by the company during the year two thousand twenty three twenty four are as follows. Technical staff salary forty five one lakh sixty two is machine operation expenses. Twenty seven thousand is machine maintenance expenses. uh wages and salaries of the store staff is 36000 so the total overheads of the company i'll do this uh 45000 plus 162000 plus 27000 plus 36000 this is nothing but 270000 okay during this period direct labor hours worked were 72000 okay Now see, if you all will understand, even my first sentence also. Direct labor hours worked for P and Q were fourteen hundred beta, but direct labor hours worked in that entire period was seventy two thousand. So there must be other products also. Okay, further. 
Now the company wants to adopt activity based costing. Now just before I'll read activity based costing, no one small thing. Presently the company uses single overhead rate based upon direct labor hours. Okay, based on direct labor hours. Further, <coughs> overheads incurred by the company during the year two thousand twenty three twenty four are as follows. Okay. Technical staff salary forty five thousand, machine operation, machine maintenance, wages and salaries of the store staff. Just keep these four expenses in mind. The total is two lakh seventy thousand. Further, during this period, the working, the direct labor hours was seventy two thousand. Now, from here we try to start the things for activity based costing. Now the company wants to adopt activity based costing. For this purpose, the following activities are identified: quality control. Okay, first activity. Second, setup of the machine for production, and third one, stores receiving. If I was in place of the institute, I would have changed the order of this. I would have written this thing first, this thing next, and this thing last. Sir, what does it matter? Honestly, it does not matter. Okay, but what happens is you should give the activities how they will be performed. So first thing is you will receive the material, then you will set up the machines for production. And third, once a product is made, you will inspect it for quality. I think that is a sequence of the events that it is there. Okay, further, it is also decided that salary of the technical staff. Now, see, I am trying to highlight some way, beta. Salary of the technical staff. Okay. Also decide the salary of the technical staff should be distributed among machine maintenance, setup, and quality control in the ratio of one is to two is to two. Okay, remember this line. So salary of technical staff should be distributed among machine maintenance, setup, and quality control in the ratio of one is to two is to two. Okay, then machine maintenance expenses. Machine maintenance was this. Okay, I don't know how to be underlining now. Uh, just a sec. Machine maintenance and machine operation expenses should be divided in the ratio of two is to three between stores and production setup activity. Okay. So machine main machine operation and machine maintenance. They have told you how to be dividing it among the various activities. Okay. During this month, the cost drivers for these activities were identified as requisition raised five seven six zero. See that five seven six zero no does not match with this particular figure. If it does not match, that means there must be other products also. Production setup seven thousand two hundred again seven thousand two hundred. Does not match with the this particular figure, so there must be other products also. And over here, seven twenty number of quality test, number of quality test in this case does not match with this particular figure, so there must be other products. You are required to compute the cost of the products P and Q based upon traditional absorption costing system. The cost of the products P and Q based upon activity based costing system. Okay. Now let's start to be doing this. See, now you want to be finding out cost of the products, no P and Q. So cost will include direct material, direct labor, and overheads. Okay. So first of all, direct material. Direct material were there with you over here. Okay. And uh, direct labor hours are over here. Multiply by the wage rate. So therefore, eight hundred into fourteen point five. So therefore, that is eleven thousand six hundred. The other one, six hundred into fourteen point five, eight thousand seven hundred. Okay, you do that. This will be giving you all prime cost. Okay, now add factory over it. See, company is currently following. I'm recapping that time. Presently, the company uses single overhead rate based upon direct labor hours. Okay, all the overheads are absorbed using direct labor hours. So therefore, all the overheads means two lakh seventy. All the labor hours means seventy two thousand. Please, by mistake, do not divide by fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred are only the labor hours for these two products. There are other products also. So this is the overhead cost for this. So two lakh seventy thousand divided by seventy two thousand. So therefore, this will be three point seven five. That's it. Okay. So this is your absorption rate per labor hour. So therefore, factory overheads are the rate of three point seven five. Okay. 
पर लेबर आर एंड ऑब्वियसली नंबर ऑफ लेबर आर्स वर एट हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स हंड्रेड सो टेक एट हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स हंड्रेड ऑन यू कैल सी सी वट डज दिस एब्जॉर्बशन रेट मीन बेटा एब्जॉर्बशन रेट इज अवर हेड रेट फॉर एवरी लेबर आर चार्ज थ्री पॉइंट सेवन फाइव so how many labor hours were there for each and every product 800 and 600 no so 3.75 into into 800 that will be giving you all this 600 that will be giving you all this once you all do that this will give you factory cost divided by number of units this will give you factory cost per unit that's it this is factory cost per unit over here 9.62 and 8.47 this should have been your first answer okay i don't know individually whatever is a break up of the marks over here okay but uh, this should be carrying lesser marks because this was too easy okay now let's start to be doing activity based costing see in activity based costing beta this data this data this data dm and dl all those things remain same only are okay so therefore this i have copied this i have copied this i have copied this i have copied but obviously what changes is nothing but factory overheads okay now try to be thinking how do you ever solve questions of activity based costing first identify all your activities okay sir activities were given to you in the question absolutely correct there were three activities quality control setup and stores receiving so i have written those activities over here quality control setup and stores receiving okay find out their cost now this data is nowhere in the question okay so this data is nowhere in the question okay so then sir from where did you get this data i will get it okay then you try to search for cost driver for each activity now cost driver in this case was simple okay you will know by the names only so over here first activity is quality control i guess for that it will be number of quality test okay then setup it will be nothing but number of production runs or number of uh, production setups and stores receiving it will be nothing but in this case requisitions raised that's it okay now in this case no so once we arrive at this cost cost driver we already know okay quality inspection production runs and purchase requisitions okay then it is a simple job that i'll tell you all in just a while so from where did you get this cost that is whatever we have to be doing see you all have four cost over here okay 1 2 3 4 these cost have to be divided among these three activities okay so on one side i have plotted all the expenses on the other side i have plotted all the activities okay i'm rubbing out this mess that i have created okay then i'll be shifting to the solution okay see over here what i have done all the all the expenses that were over there okay there is one thing and then the three activities quality control setup and stores receiving these are the three activities that are there okay now listen to me first now first expense machine operation what is told in machine operation see machine operation and machine maintenance okay means uh this expense as well as this expense okay they have to be divided where they have to be distributed in the ratio of 2 is to 3 between stores and production setup so therefore stores means this last activity so to that activity 2 by 5 will go okay and production setup activity 3 will be going over there okay so therefore 3 over here and 2 over here that is what i must have done you check up my solution so therefore machine operation and machine maintenance okay machine operation and machine maintenance 162 and 27000 okay these are the first two expenses okay these will be getting divided 3 by 5 to setup and 2 by 5 to stores receiving okay that is whatever i have done over here i'll just check up the calculations once 162000 into 97200 Okay, sixty-four thousand eight hundred. Same way, twenty-seven thousand into sixty percent, sixteen two hundred, and two uh, by five. That means your forty percent will be coming over here. Okay, you do in the ratio of three to two. Okay, further. So out of four expenses, out of four expenses, this thing is done. This thing is done. It was told to you. Okay. Now one more thing. There was one last expense. Okay, called as wages and salaries of the store staff. 
For this, there was nothing that was told in the question. So, sir, what is to be done for that? It is simple. This is wages and salaries of the store staff. No, so entire amount will be going to the store's activity. Okay, to the store's receiving. So, in this case, wages and salaries of the store staff. In case you wish to be writing something over here, you can write down the word direct. Okay. So entire amount, entire amount means amount of thirty six thousand will get debited to the stores receiving activity. So thirty six thousand I have put over here. So I have told you the logic of these. I have told you the logic of this. Now last expense that is left is salaries of technical staff. Now those people who give all the tests with me, this thing you all had got it wrong over there also. Okay, so I told you all please be very careful. Okay, this is a new adjustment that has come, and I think those people who had appeared for the test they will be remembering this thing for sure. Okay, see. What those guys have told, I'm reading this adjustment now. Okay, whatever is highlighted, you see this. It is decided that salary of the technical staff should be distributed among machine maintenance. Okay, setup. This is one of the activity and quality control. This is one of the activities in the ratio of one is to two is to two. So one thing for sure that whatever is the amount one plus two plus two is five. So therefore. Two by five and two by five should be going to setup and quality control. Okay, see what I have done. Ah, uh, your salary of the technical staff is nothing but forty-five thousand. Forty-five thousand, forty-five thousand, forty-five thousand. Take forty-five thousand, beta, into two divided by five. That will be coming to eighteen thousand. So eighteen thousand will be going to setup and quality control. Okay, is that okay? How I have done, I'll uh, tell you all. But are the amounts okay by this method? Okay, fine. So you all will understand. Out of forty-five thousand, I have already dealt with four fifth wala part. Okay, four fifth wala part. Okay. Now what is left is that one fifth wala part. Okay, that one fifth and that one fifth. You read this word over here. That one fifth, this one part will be going to machine maintenance, sir. Machine maintenance means which activity? I don't know. But then machine maintenance was nothing but this expense. So therefore, whatever you give to the technical staff, one fifth of that is towards machine maintenance only. So whatever was the ratio of machine maintenance will be the ratio of that one fifth part also. I hope you all understood. So therefore, in this case, see what I have done over here. I have picked up the one fifth part that is nine thousand, and that I have divided in the same ratio as machine maintenance. That is zero is to three is to two. So therefore, this thing goes over in that particular ratio only. So therefore, nine thousand into three by five. So five four zero zero, and this is three six zero zero. That's it. Our job gets completed with this entire thing. Okay. So this is the expense of the first activity, second activity, third activity. These three expenses I have put over here. Now this is one statement that we all make every time. No, in each and every question of activity based costing, list all your activities. We did that. Find out cost of each activity. We all did that. Cost driver for each activity. We all did that. But please do remember, eighteen thousand is not only the cost for these two inspections of P and Q. There were other products also. So therefore. Totally, there was seven twenty quality inspection that were carried out. Seven twenty was given over here. Okay, so therefore number of quality test. So therefore eighteen thousand is the cost for seven twenty. So therefore please divide. This will give you twenty five. Okay. Then production runs one thirty six eight hundred divided by seven thousand two hundred production runs. I guess you all now know the data, and one one five two hundred divided by five seven six zero purchase requisition. So therefore, these are the cost driver rates that you arrive. But once you all get this, it is twenty five rupees per quality inspection. There were twenty seven and eighteen quality inspection carried out for P and Q. Twenty seven and eighteen comes from here. Okay, so therefore, please multiply. So therefore, once you all will multiply, so twenty five into this and twenty five into eighteen, this will be fetching you all the answers. Okay, same way nineteen into this and this, same way twenty into this and this. Once you all do that, these will be the overheads to be charged. Once you get your overheads, these overheads will start to form part of your cost sheet. They will come over here. Okay, you will arrive at factory cost divided by number of units. This will be giving you all factory cost per unit. Okay, these should have been your final answers as far as the things go. Please just whenever you are trying to be solving, check up all the calculations that you all can. Okay. 
ओके आई होप दैट आई हैव डन द कैलकुलेशंस करेक्ट इन केस ऑफ कैलकुलेशन एरर यू कैन ऑलवेज ट्राई टू टेल मी आई विल रेक्टिफाई माय सॉल्यूशन बट एज पर मी मोस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स शुड बी करेक्ट एज सच ओके दैट्स इट अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन ओके दिस क्वेश्चन वाज अ बोनस बट बिलीव मी ओनली फॉर दोस पीपल हु हैड सॉल्व दैट क्वेश्चन ऑफ टेस्ट दैट आई हैड गिवन ओके सो मेनी क्वेश्चंस आई ऑलवेज ट्राई टू पुट इन टेस्ट समथिंग दैट यू ऑल हैव नॉट सीन बिफोर दैट इज बेसिकली टू test your ability to be solving those type of questions that you all have not seen before okay that's it for this entire question okay we'll start away with the next one now चलिए गाइज वील स्टार अवे विद क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री बी नाउ दिस वॉज वन ऑफ द इजियर क्वेश्चन इन द एंटायर पोर्शन इन द एंटायर पेपर इट वॉज ऑन बजेटरी कंट्रोल फ्लेक्सीबल बजेट ओके इजी वन लेट स्टार्ट ऑफ साबी लिमिटेड इज करेंटली वर्किंग एट एटी परसेंट कैपेसिटी लेवल एंड फर्निश द फॉलोइंग इन्फॉर्मेशन फॉर द करंट पीरियड ओके प्रोडक्शन एंड सेल्स नाइनटी सिक्स थाउजेंड यूनिट्स डायरेक्ट वेरिएबल कॉस्ट ट्वेंटी फैक्ट्री ओवर हेड्स एट लैख फोर्टी एडमिन एक्सपेंसिज विच आर फिक्स ट्वेंटी लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड सेल्स कमीशन टू परसेंट ऑफ सेल्स वैल्यू ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एक्सपेंसिज द लोडिंग कैपेसिटी सो दिस आई एम हाईलाइटिंग ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एक्सपेंसिस फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज पर ट्रक एंड लोडिंग कैपेसिटी इज फोर थाउजेंड यूनिट्स सो इन वन ट्रक फोर थाउजेंड यूनिट्स कैन फिट ओके एंड फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इट विल बी कॉस्टिंग यू रुपीज फोर थाउजेंड ओके फर द सेलिंग प्राइस ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट इज वन ट्वेंटी पर यूनिट एंड फैक्ट्री ओवर एट्स आर एटी परसेंट वेरिएबल इन नेचर जस्ट अ सेक नाउ दिस आई विल ट्राई टू डू समथिंग एट दिस पर्टिकुलर टाइम ओनली दे आर सिंग फैक्ट्री ओवर एट्स आर 80% परसेंट वेरिएबल सो दे फोर ट्वेंटी परसेंट मस्ट बी फिक्स ओके सो एट लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड इंटू ट्वेंटी परसेंट ओके दिस इज वन लैख सिक्सटी एट थाउजेंड ओके वन लैख सिक्सटी एट थाउजेंड द रेस्ट इन दिस केस मस्ट बी द वेरिएबल पार्ट सिक्स लैख सेवेंटी टू बट वेरिएबल इज ऑलवेज पर यूनिट कॉस्ट सो दे फोर दिस इज द कॉस्ट फॉर नाइनटी सिक्स थाउजेंड यूनिट्स प्लीज डू रिमेंबर यू आर वर्किंग एट एटी परसेंट सो नाइनटी सिक्स थाउजेंड रेप्रेजेंट एटी परसेंट ओके सो डिवाइडेड बाई Ninety six thousand. So therefore, this figure is seven per unit. Okay, this seven per unit I must have used somewhere over here. Okay, so I just thought I'll say in advance. Further, the management of Sabi Limited has come to know there'll be high fluctuations in the demand of the product in the upcoming year, and it would not be easy to predict the demand. Okay, selling price per unit will not be affected by the demand fluctuation. Sabi Limited has decided to prepare flexible budget for the product at sixty, eighty, and hundred percent. Do remember, currently we are working at eighty percent. You are required to prepare flexible budget showing the total cost at each level. So what I did, currently we are working at eighty percent. I made that thing as a first column. Then sixty and hundred, they all want more. Okay, let's complete all the things first of all at eighty percent. Okay, then we'll try to be talking further. Okay, see. 80% means 96000 units that we all are aware we have to prepare at 60 and 80 also so 96000 is 80% try to work out 100% should be coming to 120 120 you can multiply by 60% so at 60% you are going to be making 72000 units okay now see your job is to calculate total cost but i have calculated sales because there is some expense that is a percentage of sales check it up over here there is some one that is it was given to you it was given to you ha huh. sales commission is 2% of sales value so i have computed sales also for that purpose so 120 rupees is a selling price that 120 rupees is given to you over here so 120 into 96000 into 72000 into 120000 okay now let's start to be doing the thing so direct variable cost per unit is 20 rupees so therefore that 20 per unit i have written if it is a per unit cost that then i have written else i have not written okay then factory overheads the variable part is 7 rupees per unit okay so therefore that figure i have written over here okay further fixed 168000 of factory overheads that i have written from here then admin overheads 20 lakh 60 that is completely fixed okay so therefore this in fact i should not have written over here but it doesn't matter i have not done the total so don't bother okay so 20 lakh 60000 is the admin cost okay further i try to conclude the things till now see direct variable cost is 20 rupees per unit okay uh, just a sec hmm. 
So direct variable cost is 20 rupees per unit multiplied that thing by 96,000, 72,000 and 120,000. You will be able to arrive at this figure, this figure, this figure. First thing done, variable factory overage is 7 per unit. 7 per unit into the units will fetch you this, this and this. The fixed part that I had calculated over here, 1,68,000 beta, that in any case will remain same only, no matter how many units you all produce. So therefore, 1,68, 1,68 and 1,68, that data will be remaining same only. Okay, further, admin overheads will be remaining 20,60,000 because those are fixed, no matter what level you will be operating, it will remain same only. Sales commission is nothing but 2% of sales value. Okay, you can either take 2% of this, or you can take 2% of this get per unit, then multiply by number of units. So therefore, 120,000, sorry, 120 into 2%, 2.4 per unit into number of units. In case you do not wish to be uh, doing that, you can take 2% of these figures also. Answer should be coming same. I'll check it up once for you. 11520000 into 2%. In any case, it will be coming 2,30,400 only. And lastly, transportation expenses, be careful. See, how did this 96,000 rupees come? So therefore, we are going to be making how many units beta? 96,000. Okay, see, 96,000 will be transporting with the help of a truck. In one truck, 4,000 units will fit in. Okay. And it will cost you 4,000 rupees per truck. Okay, so therefore answer in end will be 96,000. Same way over here, it will be 72,000 units divided by 4,000 units in one truck into 4,000 rupees cost. Same way over here, it will become 120,000. Once you all do that, I have just totaled these cost and nothing else because our job is just to be finding out cost and nothing else. So therefore, these are the costs that are there. Okay, these should have been your final answers. Okay, that's it. Simple, straightforward question. Nothing much in this entire question. Okay, just you had to prepare the budgets at different levels as such. Okay, chali. So this question is all together done. Let's uh, start away with the next question. So Charlie guys, we'll start away with question number 4a. Now this was a big question of 9 marks on standard costing. The reason it was there for 9 marks because there were 9 variances. Question was on material variances as well as uh, labor variances. Now those students who have been there with me, those guys know that. I don't teach by any formula, okay, neither in like any of the chapters, including this chapter. But then for the benefit of all those students who all are not my students, I've written the formula also. So therefore you all are a bit okay about it. One more thing, material variances and labor variances are always dependent upon output. Okay, so therefore we always prepare revised standard for actual output. Let's start to be doing this. BG Limited produces a standard product and is sold in 10 kgs. The standard cost card per pack is as follows. Direct material. So for a pack which is of 10 kgs, direct material A is needed, direct material B is needed to be purchased at the rate of 50 rupees and 40 rupees. Direct labor, 6 hours at the rate of 20 rupees per hour. Okay. The company manufactured and sold 1600 packets during the period. So this was a standard data beta for one packet. This was a standard data for one packet. Okay. There are 1600 packets like this in the month. Actual data for material and labor cost was recorded as under. Okay. Direct material A, direct material B, 7,000, 12,500 at the rate of 40, at the rate of 45. Labor hours paid for two different categories of workers, skilled and semi-skilled. See, in standard time, in standard data, na, okay, this was a standard data beta. There was only one type of labor, but in reality, we employed two categories of labor, skilled and semi-skilled, and we paid them at what rate? 6,000 hours at the rate of 25, 4,000 hours at the rate of 20. So therefore, obviously, this is actual data for labor, and this is nothing but actual data for material. Okay, further, 5% of the time paid was lost due to an abnormal reason. Okay, so 5% of the time paid was lost due to abnormal reason. Fine. Calculate the following variances indicating their nature. Okay. First, material cost variance, material price variance, material mix, sorry, material usage, material mix, material yield. These are the five variances of material. For labor, labor cost variance, labor rate variance, labor idle time variants and labor efficiency variants. Let's start to be doing that. Now, first of all, we try to convert the things into our usual form. And how do we do that? See, 
This is a standard data for one packet. So for one packet, four and eight kgs are the rate of 50, 40. That data I've written over here. For one packet, four and eight kgs should be paid at the rate of 50, 40. So therefore, this should have been the standard cost. But we always try to calculate variances of material and labor based upon actual output. Actual output was 1600 packets. So revised standard will get prepared for 1600 packets. Okay. So for 1600 packets, for one packet, it is this. For 1600 packets, it will be this. Okay, means for one packet, 4 kgs for 1600 will become 6400, 12800, 19200. Just cross multiply, nothing else. To be purchased at the rate of 50 and 40, that data has come over here. So this was supposed to be the standard cost. Okay, for 1600 packet, this was supposed to be the cost. But in reality, this was the actual cost. 7000 at the rate of 40 and 12500 at the rate of 45. So therefore, this was actual cost. Now, this data is there with you. You can start to be computing all the variances based upon however you all have learned. Example, first variance will be standard material cost minus actual material cost. That is nothing but total material cost variance, 10,500 adverse. Second, material price variance, standard rates minus actual rates, okay, into actual quantity. So therefore, this will be 7,500 favorable. Then material usage variance, how much should have been used? I'll rub off few things so therefore you all can relate to me. How much should have been used? How much was actually used into the standard rate? That is whatever I've done over here. That is material usage variance. How much should have been used? How much was actually used into the standard rates? Okay. So therefore, this will be 18,000 adverse. Then you all have material mix variance. How do you all do that? Material mix variance, we break off this into standard ratio. The standard ratio is 4 is to 8. That means 1 is to 2. Okay. So 19,400. Uh, 19,500 in the ratio of 1 is to 2. I guess that will be coming to 6,500 and 13,000. So therefore, breakup of 19,500 should have been this and this. But in reality, the breakup in this case was 7,000 and 12,500. Multiply that thing in this case by your... Uh, Standard rates that is 50 and 40. Answer will be 5000 adverse. And lastly, you all have material yield variance. How do you compute material yield variance? Overall, we all should have used this. Overall, we all use this into this figure upon this particular figure. That's it. Okay. So therefore, overall, you all use more no. So therefore, variance will be adverse over here. Okay. That is it about your material variances. Okay. You should have got these answers. Easy question. In labor variances, see. For one packet, standard R should have been skilled, uh, sorry, should have been, there was only one type of labor in the standard data, okay. So therefore, uh, 6 hours at the rate of 20, 6 hours at the rate of 20, so 6 hours at the rate of 20, so therefore 120 rupees, okay. So for one packet, it should have been 120, for 1600 packets, okay, for one packet, 6, for 1600 packets, 9600 at the rate of 20. So therefore, 192. So this should have been your labor cost. Originally in the standard, no. Originally in the standard, there was nothing called as types of labor. But in reality, there were two types of workers. That is skilled and semi-skilled. And those guys were paid for these many hours. 6,000, 4,000 at the rate of 25 and at the rate of 20. But please do remember, 5% of this time was idle time. That I will try to find out separately. Okay. But over here, always hours paid for come. Okay. If you all don't recall, okay, try to see your books. Over here, hours paid for come. Let's start to be computing all the variances. First variance, total labor cost variance. This should have been the labor cost. This was the labor cost. So therefore, 38,000 adverse. Then rate variance. Rate should have been 20, but rate was 25 and 20 into actual hours. So therefore, I've written 22 times. The standard rate should have been 20. It was 25 and 20 into actual hours paid for. So therefore, 30,000 adverse will be coming over here further. Labor idle time variance. Now, 5% of this and 5% of this, 300 and 200 hours were idle hours. Okay. Idle time variance, we always multiply by standard rate because the rate difference has already come over here. So, therefore, standard rate is 20. So, therefore, 6,000 adverse, 4,000 adverse, 10,000 adverse. Further, labor efficiency variance. Labor efficiency variance in this case. Uh, labor efficiency variance. Now, workers should have taken 9,600 hours. But in reality, they all took 
10,000 hours. No, that's wrong. They did not take 10,000 hours because out of 10,000, 500, that is 300 and 200 were idle hours. For efficiency, you always take hours worked, hours worked, worked, worked. Okay. So therefore, 9,600 hours should have been taken. 9,500 hours were taken into 20, 2,000 favorable. Okay, that's it. With that, the complete jobs are done over here. Okay, everything that we had to be doing is all over with this. Okay, workers have taken lesser number of, so uh, they have taken uh, lesser number of hours. So, variance is favorable. One small request because I wanted to complete these kind of questions slightly faster. If you all have been taught to do by a certain way, kindly you all can do by that particular way because the way that I try to be teaching, my students know this thing that there are no formulas that we ever have. We just try to see the question, try to apply the logic that what is the logic of every variance and we all do it. Still, I've written the formulas in blue for all those students who have only learned this chapter by some formula. So therefore, this must be the formula that you all have learned. I don't endorse those things. Okay. But then for the benefit of a bigger community, I've done that. Okay. Chali. So this question is altogether done of standard costing nine marks, but it was kind of a giveaway. Same way, even the next question is a giveaway question only. So I expect that question number five, this question number four, no, I guess. Okay. This must have been solved by every student in India. Okay. Everybody must have attempted this, would not have left this option, uh, this question in option. Okay. Chale, we'll start away with the next question. Chale, question number four, part B. Now, this was kind of a theory question plus some classification. Over here, no numbers as such. Let's start to be doing that. Explain, build, operate, transfer approach and classify the following expenses into either capital cost or operating or maintenance cost for the toll roads. Okay. Now, first thing, explain, build, operate, transfer. Now, now whenever the roads have to be made, it's very expensive. The government doesn't have that much amount of money. So what does the government do? It operates like, you know, it tries to give the contract to some companies. Okay. Example, I'll just tell you. Suppose they all have a contract, say with l &D, Okay. Uh, Larson and Tubro for one of the roads. They tell them, you build the road, you maintain the road and you collect the toll for say 20 years. Once those 20 years are over, your rights will come to an end. And then you surrender your right to collect the toll. So it's build. Who will build? Larson and Dubro. Second, operate. Who will operate the toll? Larson and Dubro. Okay. Third, transfer. Who will transfer to whom? After the end of that period, LNT will transfer that entire contract back to the government. Then it is left to the government whether to continue the toll or to stop it. That is their wish. So this is called as build, operate, transfer. This is of course done to speed up the process of making the roads. And basically it's very expensive for governments to keep on building the roads like this. Okay. So therefore they tend to appoint the private companies for this. This is called as build, operate, transfer. This you all can write in your own words. Okay. That is whatever I've done over here. Now, all the costs that such companies will incur, those are usually categorized into capital cost. And then the second one that you all have are the maintenance cost. Then third one that you all have are annual operating cost. Okay. Capital cost. Capital cost are those which are incurred to build the road. Okay. And any cost in reference to that. Okay. It could be preliminary and pre-operative uh, expenses, we try to find out where to build the road, how much width up and so on. They try to acquire the land, material that is required for construction of the land. Then same way, the labor that is required to construct the uh, roads up and so on. Okay. Uh, then the overheads incurred in the course of actual construction of the land, contingency allowance, you all will understand that whenever a company starts to be building the roads, there could be a lot of things that they might not be doing in advance. So therefore, they got to be keeping a contingency. Interest during the construction period. So before the operation of the road starts, like, you know, before the road becomes like a road, okay, any interest that you all pay till that particular time will be coming over here, okay. Then second one are maintenance cost. Maintenance cost every year of Obviously, roads will become bad also. These companies will have to try to maintain them. Okay. All those things will be coming over here. So, annual maintenance cost includes the primary maintenance of the wearing uh, surface, the railings, the roadside furniture, etc. Okay. They have to like, you know, there are uh, potholes. They have to try to uh, fill them up and so on. Then periodic maintenance cost includes the cost of the overlays, paintings of the railings, which might be there in middle or on the sides, all those things. 
and then annual operating cost beta they will be collecting the tolls they will employ the people okay so these days there is fast tag everybody is aware of that okay but even for that there are expenses still there are people over there okay so therefore all those things will be coming over here just for your uh, information even fast tag is going to be a outdated thing now there will be gps based toll collection that will automatically get debited from your bank account okay so that is something that happens in the foreign countries but for that a device has to be fit in your car okay that will track your vehicle as such okay one of the best ways whereby there will be no lines also as such so therefore you pass as if there are no tolls but then tolls will be there okay that is gps based toll collection now annual operating cost toll collection expenses the admin expenses for day to day operations okay this i would like to cut out okay and then interest expenses during the servicing term loans as such okay now in this case that is what we are about to be doing okay now there were five costs which you had to try to classify sorry there were six costs that you have to try to classify so land acquisition obviously will be part of your capital cost okay that is quite simple material and labor will be part of your capital cost so therefore i guess this as well as this will be part of that okay apart from that i guess contingency allowance also will be part of your capital cost so therefore these three are capital cost okay further interest expenses incurred for servicing the term loans beta these are not the interest expenses during the construction period once it is construction period is over then obviously the company might have taken the loan no for making the roads like you require a lot of funds for that whatever is that interest that is going to be a normal expense for you okay so therefore that is whatever i written over here also okay that will be nothing but your annual operating cost that is not your maintenance cost no the maintenance cost means the cost of maintaining the roads here so therefore interest expenses incurred for servicing the term loans will be operating expenses okay so land is done then interest expenses are done material and labor is done contingency allow is done toll collection charges obviously these are your operating expenses here we did that thing here periodic maintenance uh periodic painting of the railings there will be nothing but your maintenance cost i guess we did that thing over here the uh, maintenance cost of the overlays painting of the railings up and so on these are the maintenance costs that are incurred each and every year to keep the road in a proper condition as such okay this was a simple question even if you all have solved our questions also we all have done a question no on toll okay you should have been able to be doing this okay you can be explaining the things in your own words it is not compulsory to be exactly using the words of the institute okay chali this question is done chali guys we'll start away with question number 5a now one thing that i have always maintained in class chapters like process costing overheads activity based costing these are questions that will always be coming no matter whatever happens like in this attempt also you all can be seeing in fact two days before the exams i had told like you know that pay more attention to all these particular chapters okay and in that the chapters that i had mentioned was process costing was overheads was activity based costing was standard costing and was cvp analysis and you all can be seeing almost 70% of the paper was from there only as such okay so these are chapters that are important even for the future attempts these are the chapters that you cannot be ignoring like you know one girl i told sir i have skipped this chapter number 14 what is to be done now i told nothing you try to be repenting okay how can i try to give a solution for all those things that you all have not done okay so please there is no shortcut do everything whatever is being told to you let's start it off this data pertains to three machines operating in manufacturing division of pqr corporation for the financial year 23 24 estimated expenses direct labor expenses per quarter 250000 okay then uh you all have oil expenses 103125 this is per quarter per quarter per quarter per annum per quarter per quarter per quarter per month per month okay i have underlined all these things first only so direct labor expenses that is 250000 oil expenses 103125 Okay, thirty-seven five hundred. They have given you the breakup also. I'll just try to be seeing thirty-seven five hundred into two plus twenty-eight one twenty-five. Okay, so that matches up with this machine insurance expenses per quarter depreciation breakup is uh, given to you. Building maintenance expenses that is one lakh wages of the operator. Okay, then you all have electricity expenses, rent and rates, salary of the technicians. Okay. 
Further, the technician only works on machine X and Y. What I will try to be doing now, somewhere or the other, I'll mention these adjustment numbers here. Else it'll become a bit difficult for me to try to trace the thing. Technician only works on machine X and Y. Okay. So this I'll write down as 1 and this I'll write down as 1. So for that, this adjustment is there. Operator controls all the three machines. Okay. Operator was over here. Okay. Operator. Controls all the three machines. Okay. And both spend equal time on the machines worked on them. Okay. So all of them spend equal time. Now, please do remember the data pertains to three machines. Okay. X, Y, and Z are three machines, not three departments, not three products, but three machines as such. Okay. Further, there are 14 holidays besides Sunday in a year of which six of them are on Saturdays. Now, this was a confusing one. I do not think in India, many people would have got this thing correct. There was a strike of the workers for five days, including one on Saturday. The manufacturing department operates for eight hours a day on regular weekdays. While on Saturdays, the operating hours are reduced by two hours per day. Means they all work for six hours. Okay. All machines operate at 80% capacity throughout the year. Assume 365 days in a year. The following additional information is available. A 20% hike in the price of oil. Okay. And 10% rise in oil consumption for machines X and Y only. Okay. Particulars for machine XYZ, three more things are given to you. Number of workers, ratio of kilowatt rating and ratio of floor space occupied. Okay. Required prepare a statement detailing the allocation of the expenses to each machine on, on annual basis and thereafter computing comprehensive machine array for each of the specified machines. Now, this was tough question to be honest okay not everybody would have got this thing correct okay but if you have got it okay then it should be very good now see first thing that i did i have to be calculating all the things on annual basis no okay on annual basis if you have to compute the things on annual basis so what i have done i multiplied this thing by four okay because this is per quarter i multiplied this thing by four i multiplied this thing by four I multiplied this thing by 4, by 4, by 4, by 12, and by 12, okay. And accordingly, I made a statement over here. So, therefore, all these expenses, okay. So, check up, please. 2,50,000 became 10 lakhs over here. That is one thing. Then, for oil expenses, I'll just wait because some adjustment was there. 60,000 and 6 lakhs became 2,14,24 lakh lakhs, I guess. Uh... 2,40,000 over here. Then, uh, sorry, this depreciation was directly per annum. So, therefore, that thing I have directly recorded as 6 lakh rupees over here. No change in that. And breakup of depreciation is there with us. Okay. So, therefore, there is like uh, nothing to be done for that. Then, building maintenance per quarter. So, 1 lakh rupees per quarter. So, for a year, it should be becoming 4 lakh rupees. Wages of the operator per quarter is 2,25 multiplied by 4. So, I must have recorded 9 lakh rupees over here. Electricity expenses is uh, 3 lakh rupees per quarter. 3 lakh rupees per quarter. So, 3 lakhs into uh, 3 lakh rupees per quarter into 4. So, therefore, 12 lakh rupees will be the amount over here. Rent and rates. Rent and rates is 80,000. So, therefore, this figure... I have multiplied by 12. It is 80,000 per month. No. Okay. And then you all have 60 to 500. 60 to 500 into 12. So, therefore, this figure will be 750,000. That is how I have tried to be getting the things. Now, for oil, no. Okay. Somebody could be getting confused. The following information is also available. 20% price. 20% hike in the price of the oil. So, I guess these must be the expenses before considering those adjustments. Okay. So, therefore, those guys are saying that there will be an oil price hike in this case uh, of 20%. So, first of all, these are per quarter. Can we multiply by 4? So, let's multiply all of them by 4. Okay. There will be 20% hike. So, therefore, it will increase by 20%. That means multiplying by 120% or 1.2. So, therefore, I multiply all these things by 1.2. And then they are saying consumption of X and Y. See over here, next adjustment. 
टेन परसेंट राइज इन द ऑयल कंजम्पन फॉर मटीरियल एक्स एंड वाई ओनली ओनली फॉर एक्स एंड वाई द कंजम्पन ऑफ ऑयल विल बी राइजिंग बाई टेन परसेंट मीन्स विल बिकम हंड्रेड एंड टेन परसेंट दैट इज सेम एज मल्टीप्लाइंग बाई वन पॉइंट वन सो दे फोर दीज मज बी द कैलकुलेशन दैट यू ऑल शुड हैव डन ओके सो दे फोर थर्टी सेवन फाइव हंड्रेड इंटू फोर इंटू वन पॉइंट टू इंटू वन पॉइंट वन सो दे फोर दिस फिगर शुड हैव बीन वन लैख नाइंटी एट थाउजेंड आई होप आई एम क्लियर same way now i have not shown the details for these things but please note that okay further 37500 into 4 that'll give you for a year into 1.2 into 1.1 that'll be the same amount beta what use useless things i'm doing then the last one 28125 per quarter into 4 into 1.2 or oh, therefore this is 135000 okay 135000 that's it okay now this job is all together done okay so so how these amounts have come you all know now and i got these amounts and then i did the total of this okay for depreciation the breakup was already there so therefore there is nothing else to be done for rest of the things we have to try to be thinking how to be doing the breakup once we do the breakup then we shall be talking further okay now see direct labor expenses somebody can be saying so you are trying to find out the overhead rate so therefore direct labor is not overhead it is direct labor but yes if you all try to rationally try to be thinking the question these workers are dedicated for x y and z so these guys must be working on x y z so these are kind of machine operators beta okay so therefore in this case no i guess this should be forming part of this and that is why this data was given to you if they never ever wanted like you know this to be part of your cmhr they would not have given that only so 10 lakh rupees has to be divided up in what ratio i think so it should be divided in the ratio of number of workers okay direct labor means workers are only working no so therefore i have divided that in the ratio of number of workers 5 3 and 2 okay so therefore break up of 10 lakhs is over here so this information is also done okay further for the machine insurance now insurance i think so should be based upon the cost sir but cost of the three machines is not given but depreciation must also be bifurcated based upon cost only so therefore what i have done i have bifurcated machine insurance based upon depreciation now many students might have done something else but as per me this should be the correct one okay machine insurance and um, insurance is you is usually percentage of cost beta okay so therefore if the cost is higher depreciation must also be higher so depreciation ratio will be nothing but the ratio of the machine cost also so therefore 1 is to 2 is to 3 further building maintenance building maintenance i guess so building maintenance should be divided in the ratio of floor area 1 to 1 that is whatever i have done over here 1 is to 2 is to 1 okay then wages of the operator beta there was some adjustment for wages of the operator if you all try to be seeing there is one operator for all the three machines see over here operator controls all the three machines and both spend equal time on the machines worked on by them so therefore there is one operator for all the three machine he is spending equal time so therefore then in that case it will get divided equally so therefore machine operator so 9 lakh rupees was the cost 3 lakhs 3 lakhs 3 lakhs okay so this thing is also done apart from that this thing is also done then the next one was electricity expenses i guess electricity expenses can be bifurcated based upon the ratio of kilowatt rating to be very honest ratio of kilowatt should be multiplied by number of hours if you all remember in one of the questions there was power cost we divide the power cost in the ratio of composite ratio of machine hours into horsepower no okay that thing but in this case no hours by all the machines will be same that you all will realize so if that ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1 you all can be ignoring it so therefore this is the only ratio that will matter so therefore the electricity expense will be getting divided in the ratio of 3 is to 3 is to 4 okay further rent and rate should be divided in the ratio of area so area was over here no ratio of floor area occupied 1 to 1 okay 1 to 1 and then salary of technician it was given to you that technician only works for x and y and he dedicates equal amount of time for both of them okay so therefore in that case it will get divided only among x and y in the ratio of 1 is to 1 so therefore time okay 1 is to 1 bas once you all do that this is the total cost to be charged to all the machines 
but divided by the number of hours. Now machines are expected to be working for how many hours as such. That was a tricky thing. Now, if you have got it correct, you all have a sound mind. Okay, and your interpretation is good. That is very important. Okay, see. Now this data you'll have to read properly and one by one I will try to be doing the thing. See, from here till here, this entire thing. Okay, listen. There are 14 holidays besides Sundays in a year, out of which six are on Saturday. In all, there are 14 holidays out of which six are there on Saturday. Okay. Means remaining eight are not there uh, on Saturday. Okay. Means remaining eight. Okay. So I guess Sundays must be closed. That is why those guys have written this thing. So there, besides Sundays, there were 14 other holidays of which six of them were on Saturday. Okay. I'll read this line first. Assume 366 days in a year. Okay. Now see, what I have done. First of all, I have broken off 366 into three parts. Three parts means Sundays. Okay. Saturdays and weekdays. Okay. I have taken 52 Sundays, 52 to Saturdays and remaining because they were supposed to be 366 days. So therefore remaining I have taken as weekdays. Okay. 366 minus 52 minus 52. This is a balancing figure. Okay. Now holidays. I guess all Sundays are holidays only beta. So therefore I subtract 52 from there. Okay. Fine. Now there were 14 other holidays of which six C you have to find out number of hours that the machines are going to be working. Correct. Okay. That is whatever was your job in the question. So you have to find out CMHR. CMHR means comprehensive machine R8. We have got the total cost divide by the number of hours that the machines will be working. Correct. No. Okay. So therefore try to be finding out how many hours machine hours work. Uh, how many hours the machine work. Now for that, first of all, try to be finding out how many days factory open. So therefore out of 366 days, 52 Sundays will be all closed. So therefore this I have copied over here. Those guys I told there are 14 holidays, six of them come on Saturday. So therefore remaining eight will be coming on weekdays. So therefore these are the days left now. Okay. These are the days which are left now. 254, 46 and Sundays it's not working time. Right. So therefore that thing we all will remove. Now see, is there some other data? Yes. Uh, there was a strike of workers for five working days, including one Saturday. So therefore five days, there was strike. One of them was Saturday. So therefore remaining four days must be weekdays. Okay. So what happens if the strike is on Sunday? It doesn't matter only no as such. Those guys will not be giving you that, that data. In any case, it was supposed to be a holiday, right? So therefore what I have done, see over here, strike period is of four days. Strike period is of one day. So therefore these are the number of working days in the entire year. These many number of days, Weekdays were 250, Saturdays were 45, Sundays we all don't work only as such. Okay. Now further, the manufacturing department works for eight hours per day on regular weekdays, while on Saturdays the operator, the operating hours are reduced by two hours. So on normal days they all work for eight hours, on Saturday they all work two hours less, that means six hours. So therefore, these were the number of days I have multiplied by eight, I have multiplied by six. So therefore, these many hours are available in a certain year for the machines to be working. But there is one last line that machines operate at 80% capacity throughout the year. Okay, they all operate at 80% capacity throughout the year. So therefore multiply this data by 80%. That's it. Okay, you multiply it by 80%. This will be your answer. Once this is your answer. Okay, so on weekdays machines work for these many hours. On Saturday they work for these many hours in the entire year. Totally they all work for 1816 hours. And I guess this is the data for machine X also, Y also, Z also. There is no difference. So therefore these total cost I have divided by 1816 everywhere. Okay. As per me, this should be the comprehensive machine R8. This should have been your final answer as such. Okay. Now, in case there are some other views, you can always put the things in the comment. I shall be happy to reply. Okay. That's it about this entire question. Tricky question, especially as far as to calculate these hours as such. Not very easy. It gets a bit confusing. And unless and until you arrive at this idea, no, sir, I want to be breaking off all the days into Sunday, Saturdays and weekdays. I do not think that anybody will be able to crack that. Okay. Chali. So this entire question is altogether done. Chali guys, we'll start away now with question number 5B. Now this was a question on marginal costing and in that limiting factor. 
I really think that in this question, not many students would have realized that question is on limiting factor. Okay, but if you read the question a proper way only, then you start to be realizing that. Now, a uh, reeling fact, a uh, limiting factor means something is there in short supply. In case machine hours are there in short supply, we give ranks based upon contribution per machine hour. In case labor hours are in short supply, we give ranks based upon contribution per labor hour, so on and so forth. Let's start away with this. ABC Limited is a well-known company for producing baby care products. The company produces and sells two variants of organic shampoo for children. Baby Rose and Baby Lily. So there is a company that produces these two types of shampoos. Particulars Baby Rose, Baby Lily. Current demand and sales 4,000, 3,000. Production capacity number of bottles 7,500, 6,000. So for Baby Rose, this is our capacity. But this is whatever we produce currently because that was the demand. So therefore, there is a spare capacity of 3,500. And there is a capacity, a spare capacity of 3000 bottles of uh, baby lily in case we wish to be producing. This is the capacity. Okay. But this is whatever we all are producing right now. Okay. Further selling price per bottle 600 and 750. Then variable cost per bottle. Read this properly. Direct materials 20 per liter and the cost is 160. So 160 rupees divided by 20 rupees per liter. So it must be taking 8 liters of raw material to be making one bottle for baby rose and over here it is 200 200 divided by 20 so therefore it must be taking 10 liters okay further other variable cost other variable cost are 270 and 350 the fixed cost amounts to 5 lakhs and 4 lakh 50 for baby rose and baby lily respectively i'm only reading the question till here for some time okay and just i'm trying to do one very easy thing I take selling price, subtract the variable cost from there, you will arrive at contribution. Multiplied by number of units, these are the number of units, okay, you will arrive at total contribution. Subtract fixed cost, okay, that will fetch your profit, okay. Whether this is asked or not, I am not uh, saying that thing also, but that is whatever I have done over here. Selling price minus the variable cost will give you contribution. Uh, contribution into the number of units. Okay. 4,000 and 3,000. This will give you total contribution. Less fixed cost will be fetching your profit. Okay. That's it. Now, let's talk further. The production manager has informed that 1 lakh liters of raw material is available for production. Okay. Those guys saying that 1 lakh liters of material is available for production. Now, just one small thing, see, this 8 liters and 10 liters, I have calculated over here, liters per bottle, 8 and 10, okay. Currently, we are producing 4,000 and 3,000 bottles, correct? So, 4,000 bottles, 3,000 bottles, every bottle will require 8 liters, every bottle will require 10 liters. So, therefore, 4,000, 3,000 into 8 and 10. So, therefore, 32,000 liters, 30,000 liters. Total of both these things is 62,000 liters. But those guys are told that how much raw material we all have here, 1 lakh. So, out of 1 lakh, only 62,000 is getting used right now. So, therefore, how much liters are available to you? 38,000. This much is available more. And more production that is possible that I calculated right in the beginning is 3,500 and 3,000. That is this data and this data. Okay. I'm done till here. Okay. So therefore, currently you are producing 4,000, 3,000. Uh, you can produce this much more of baby rose, this much more of baby lily. Okay. Obviously, provided there is demand. And we have surplus raw material of 38,000. Okay. Further. The dealer has approached the company. A dealer has approached. I'll use some other pen now. A dealer has approached the company and proposed to purchase both the products at the existing selling prices, which are to be produced by utilizing the remaining unused material. So therefore, how much is remaining unused material? 38,000 liters. However, he insisted that all the bottles must be packed with eco-friendly packaging, which results in additional cost of rupees 10 per bottle. So one dealer has come. He is saying that I will buy baby rose and baby lily from you. He has not specified the quantities. Okay. So therefore he will buy and he will buy at the existing prices. These are the existing prices. But then he has told that you will have to pack it in an eco-friendly manner and that 
packaging will be costing the company 10 rupees per bottle okay presently the company is not using eco friendly material for packing of the bottles okay required prepare a detailed statement showing overall contribution and profit of the company after acceptance of dealer's proposal okay so if you accept the proposal what will be your profit now one thing that i have done already and i have explained it to you for time pass only Selling price minus variable cost will give you contribution per unit into number of units will give you your total contribution. Less fixed cost will be giving you all profit. Profit, profit. So total profit that company is currently earning is 3 lakh 30. Okay, after producing 4,000 and 3,000 units. Is this all okay? Is this all fine? Now, after this, uh, listen to me very carefully. See, now a dealer comes, he says, I will buy more of rose and lily from you. Okay. At the same selling price. Okay. I have to be thinking, okay, let me do it. But then to produce, you require more amount of material. How much material you all have more? Only 38,000 liters. Okay. And do remember maximum you can be producing this and this only. Okay. Now, if you all try to think, okay, one line that I have not uh, written over here, but that is quite obvious. See, if you're going to be producing 3,500, more and 3000 more okay into into 8 liters and 10 liters okay so 3500 into 8 this is nothing but 28000 and 30000 for this so therefore you will require 58000 liters more to be producing but you have in this case only 38000 liters which are left with you so therefore ultimately raw material will become limiting factor is this all okay that is how you should try to identify yeah we need to be producing more but material is less so therefore this is your limiting factor now so material is a limiting factor which is measured in liters in this question so therefore hence we will have to find out contribution per liter to determine which product should be produced first let's find out contribution per liter now how to be finding contribution per liter simple it is Find out contribution per unit first. Selling price minus variable cost. In variable cost, those two costs will only be coming. But do remember, there will be one extra cost also of packaging. 10 rupees per liter. Okay. You subtract that, you will be arriving at contribution per unit. But you will give ranks based upon contribution per liter because liters are there in short supply. So therefore, divided by liters per unit. Liters per unit are 8 and 10. So therefore, divide by 8, divide by 10. So therefore, contribution per liter is 20. Contribution per liter is 19. This figure is higher no give it rank one over here rank two so for those remaining materials that you have you should try to be producing rose first if rose gets exhausted then you try to prepare lily also so based upon this let's start to be doing the bifurcation see how much material is left pita 38,000. You have rose, you have lily, rank one, rank two. Okay. Now, maximum, maximum, maximum that you can be producing of rose will be 3,500 more. How did 3,500 come? Beta, this was our capacity. This was whatever we are producing now. So, therefore, remaining is your spare capacity. 3,500. Okay. Every unit will be requiring 8 liters. So, 28,000 liters will be going in that only. So, rose will take away 28,000 liters. For lily, we will be only able to spare how much? 10,000. That is 38,000 minus 28,000. Okay. So, therefore, 10,000 divided by 10 liters per unit, you will be able to make 1,000 bottles into contribution per unit, 160 and 190. That's it. Total in this case will be this plus this. This will be 7,50,000. This is 7,50,000. That is nothing but your total contribution over here of 7.5 lakh rupees. Okay. This is an extra contribution that you will be able to enjoy. Okay. If you will be accepting the offer. Okay. Plus, in any case, you are going to be getting 3,30,000 from the normal market. This was something that you had calculated over here only. So, therefore, 3,30,000 plus 7,50,000. This will be 10,80,000. So, 10,80,000 will be your answer as such. Okay. With that, we are all together done. Our job is all together over with this. Okay. This was a tricky question because you have to find out that it is actually a limiting factor or not. Okay. So, in that case, this is one thing that we all should have thought. Okay. Actually, now you all know that what we all should have done. Okay. Uh, this question is all together done. So finally, now we are on to question number six. Now, question number six, I'm not going to be much discussing. It's of no use, to be honest. 
it was just a theory question like always i have told in class also that question number 6 is always your theory question describe any five benefits of digital costing system this will be part of your chapter number 1 define the following terms controllable and uncontrollable variance they are part of your standard costing chapter then next three are there from budgetary control discuss the treatment of by products in cost accounting system this is there in your textbook also in your notebook also there are three options either you treat it as a joint product or you treat it as a scrap or the income from there you try to be treating as miscellaneous revenue then define job costing and explain the difference between job and batch costing we have discussed this thing so many times in class here okay like batch costing is an extension of job costing in job costing every job is one unit and uh, in batch costing every batch is one unit and in every batch all the units are homogeneous okay more about this in your books on needs have okay let me not try to be spending the time okay that's it from my side now if i have to try to tell you all towards the end that like you know if you are going to be giving future attempts what should be your strategy your strategy should be one that do not leave out anything there is one second do not remember any formulas much might be the eoq up and so on is still okay rest learn and do everything in a conceptual way because the paper patterns which are coming now do not demand your memory skills okay they all demand that you all should be knowing the topics in and out in a proper way this is one thing that you all keep in mind rest just few things towards the end on every saturday sunday i am releasing the lectures of my previous batch okay completely free for costing currently it is being done in english hindi language once it is done then all the english lectures will also get released okay that is one thing second thing if you want to be purchasing the lectures of the latest batch where even the case scenarios will be done okay because now the case scenarios are part of each and every chapter from may 2025 onwards okay then in that case you can always be purchasing our regular course which is of course available like you know at a very nominal price i do not wish to make money from all these things i only try to recover my cost and there is one thing that i do that's why all the lectures of the previous batches in any case i'm putting on youtube okay all the mcqs of module they are already there on youtube all the mcqs of fm subject are also coming every tuesday thursday on our youtube channel if you know anybody who is there in ca final there is one subject called as scpm all the questions of that from the board of studies portal and from the modules do come every monday wednesday friday i am trying to do my bit to be spreading good quality education help me in spreading this mission and uh, like always when the new rtps will be coming i will again come for the lectures and uh, like always just not in a very fancy way but we spend lot amount of time on only one thing that is to make the best content we do not try to take the inspiration from anybody okay we try to be thinking what should be the correct answer for each and every question okay and sometimes it take me days also but then these are the concepts that have been made by me over the past 22 years and honestly any professor whose videos you all will find okay on youtube again not saying that in a show off way but somewhere or the other those guys were either our students or had taken our books and trying to be doing the things from there okay i am doing a lot for one thing that is every student passes examinations in the first attempt and believe me the lectures that we are putting even free of cost on every saturday sunday they all have all the lectures they all have ranking of every question they all have summary of every question they all have test of every question mcqs in any case are available free so ensure that you make use of these things and spread it to your friends okay i am siano jalota i'll see you all next time with an other lecture like this till then take care bye